you can just yeah we can just put it on the record okay yeah. we're live okay and record Good morning. Uh, we're on. The, I will always. We're on the record. <laughs> Good morning. Um, so we're on the record uh, for the open session. We're opening it today. Um, I believe the fire union is uh, waiting for the president Carlos Sosano. He's just running a little bit late today. So, but we decided to go ahead and uh, move forward with the initial part of this session. What we are doing is we are passing around the sign-in sheets for today, Thursday, September 15th, 2022. And I think we have everybody on our side who signed. Yes. 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 We're pending uh, David and uh, President sure. Charlie. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll finalize them as soon as uh, Charlie gets here. Yes. Yes. At the table. Before we break from this this particular session, we'll make sure that the somebody remind me. <laughs> right, I got Victor. You. I got you. <laughs> so. Um, while the sign in sheets are going around um, from the city's perspective, I just wanted to let you know what um, today looks like and what the next bargaining session is going to look like. Um, one of the issues um, from the city side is we have a lot of uh, high management people here um, that are we have the interim budget director, we have the deputy uh, city manager serving as the interim city manager, we have the d director of uh, Human resources, we have the director of IT, and we also have the first assistant city attorney. So we have, this is extremely important to the city and mm -hmm. to us. And so we wanna make sure that we have all the proper people here um, to get all the questions answered as quickly as possible. Um, in addition to that, you know, they also have a lot of other duties and obligations and other issues that are, um, as the city continues to operate day by day, you know, it, it doesn't shut down just like your, your services don't shut down. Uh, one of the things, um, that we experienced from the time period from the last session we had was Friday, uh, August, what was that, September, September whatever Friday was. Yeah. So Friday, September 9th, and we said it, we want to at least meet weekly, right? Yes. Um, one of the things that happened is that there was only really three working days for the city side and a lot of big meetings and trainings and things in between. So we had been working with every gap of, you know, every opportunity that we can to get together and get this stuff done. And we are prepared today to present uh, some information that was requested and some counter proposals. And what we ask is that uh, we wanted to hear from you uh, what you what we what you expect to discuss at the table today, because the city really um, we're working on continued counter proposals. Mm -hmm. We have some to present this morning. Uh, we want to make sure that we get you the information as we discussed um, the last time around, and I believe that we have uh, we can go through that through that before we uh, break for caucus. Uh, but I don't from the city side. A lot of the work has to ha the, a lot of the big work to move this forward has to happen behind the scenes. And so for today, I think that we our presentation this morning will be the only public um, session that we will we we plan on presenting today. Um, in addition to you, any possible information that we can present to you today after, you know, upon request. Uh, and, we're, and we're working on that. We have most of it. From the union side, we wanted to know what we should expect so that we can make the most out of the the most out of the public session and then utilize the rest of the day in order to address the other issues that we need to work on and uh, continue to work on our counter proposals because that's that's where all, the most of the majority of the work happens. Um, and um, so that that's what we're looking at today. We didn't know what the what the fire union was uh, looking to do. Uh, I guess as far as the union, we have uh, some counters in okay. mind as well. Uh, mostly, I guess we were waiting for the information we requested less last session and we're hoping to get some of the bigger ticket items the monetary ones uh worked on today that way we can you know make the most out of use out of this meeting and sure. hopefully by next meeting have everything figured out 
uh, that way we can move forward and try to finish sure the pending and, and, and i'll tell you there's a big um we have um the proposed next meeting is for next uh thursday, thursday yes. on september 22nd and that's what we're working towards <clears throat> And we want to make sure we know that we have until the 26th. Um, I, I, I looked at my calendar. I'm not available on the 26th, okay. unfortunately. So we may have to file an extension if we need to meet that uh, that week to kind of solidify everything. And I think we should because that's right before the October um, October 1. Uh, but we're going to continue to work on this. Um, from the monetary side, the economic issues, we still are waiting on a counter proposal from the ad pays um, okay. from the union. And I think for us to be able to evaluate um, our the economic issues, we will need that counter proposal uh, before we can move forward on the rest. Because as you know, the the money that the city has is limited, and we're trying to find um, the the best use and the most value for the firefighters um, in trying to figure out how are we going to make this work and. Uh, we've already put some new some significant new money on the table. And uh, we need to see where you're coming from so that we can work uh, work within that and we'll work within the parameters that our budget provides. Okay. I mean, I think some of the counters that we proposed last last meeting kind of address more of the big picture items, the things that you know the budget mostly consists of. Uh, the ad pay. Uh, I guess we we could work on it today if you'd like. As far as during our caucus, right? Because that's the, the most out of that's the a really big um, but that's I, the really big economic issue that we have put on the table that plays into just our overall evaluation of the economic impact on this um, on the union's proposals. Okay, I just I just think the the ones we countered with last time have I guess for us the bigger impact and that kind of affects all other articles insurance ad pays all these other things we kind of look prioritize that i guess like to see those counters before we address future uh, counters but i mean we so can which, work on the, which are the ones well. yeah which are the ones that you're looking at that you counter proposed on it was september 9th because we had a we had a september 8th and a september 9th session and the counter yes. proposals from the union came on september 9th yes correct okay so which ones are you looking for? We have, you did propose the annual base pay. Yes, 15, Article 30. I think Article. those are our big ones because okay. the results of that affect, like we said, our pension and then possible counter on our insurance article. Uh, they, they affect, I guess, the ability to counter on that. So we'd like to iron out those details first, hopefully, to try to address our insurance concerns and our ad pay concerns, everything else more accurately. Does that make sense? True does insurance. <clears throat> the insurance is twenty nine, right? Yes. 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 Article twenty nine. Um, with regard to Article 29, I know that there was a subcommittee that was held yes. and uh, the information that you requested was provided from the city, right? Yes, correct. And so on that issue, um, there is the issue of an, a need to up the an additional, um, I guess, a, an additional deduction or a, put some more money in from the firefighters and, and the retiree and sides. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that we provided you with that information. And um, I think, was that the only issue that, the, that's the big issue from that, the insurance? That, that's the big issue. I think uh, what we need to just, like I said, we want to accurately uh, project what our firefighters are gonna make to know how much they're willing to contribute towards that fund and, uh, is obviously we know the retirees how much they're going to make, but we want to make sure that we can present the most accurate information to our members to see what they're comfortable with. Okay. Uh, going forward, basically. Okay. All right. So I'll discuss that with my team during caucus, and uh, we will work on those but we do I would 
from the city side, we would like to evaluate what a counter proposal on the uh, ad pay article, which is uh, article 16. It's the education benefit certificate pay and assignment pay. Okay, and then from, if you give me a second to pull up my notes. Oh, one of the other things that I've been having issues with is the only, um, I have paper articles and I've written all over them, uh -huh. but I don't have a clean set of, and I don't know if you have uh, Word documents and I can do the same or electronic documents you can email for me. The yeah. only ones that I have, um, the last articles that were emailed to me were on uh, 714, but I'll go through and ask and list out the articles that we need. And just so we can both exchange and be yeah. working off of our um, electronic and we don't kind of mess up something, um, but I will do the same. And uh, I, I already know which ones I have sent you and which ones I haven't. So I'll just send you the ones that um, send you the ones that um, I know that I haven't sent. And uh, and then I'll ask you for the ones. The only ones I received were from uh, Carlos Lozano's email on the 14th. And I think I got a couple on the 13th, but I want to make sure I have a full. Um, I'll confirm with the. Uh... Charlie, when he when he gets here, okay. to make sure which ones we have not received as well. Maybe during our caucus, we can provide a list Absolutely. to each other. That way, we have. That, you know, I'm going to use the caucus in order to make sure that we uh, forward that to you. Okay. Okay. And then, with regard to the information that was requested. During our caucus, I can provide you a written um, a written email with that. But um, on the year to year for Article 15, on the year to year proposed pay increases versus a projected year to year complete city budget, um, the request is it goes back three years of the expenses, and it can be found. And I'll send you the link. It can be found online in the city of Laredo website under the budget department and have the link it's w it's not the in the budget index. And what i'll do is i'll just forward you the email that has the link that you can click on that'll take you to that. Okay. Um, with regard to the breakdown of overtime ad pays. Um, the city will be providing that we're um, hope we'll see if, if i'll give you an update as to how quickly we can get that to you. Okay. Um, but I know that's being worked on. Uh, the with regard to the overtime, I guess you were asking for the different categories of overtime, right? At first, it was the, overtime versus assignment. short. Was it the fire assignment, special assignment, fire special assignment? Right, special we, we assignments and different ones. So I think at the beginning you were asking for an analysis of overtime versus shortage of manpower. But what you're look, what we when we discussed it, the information you're looking for is the different categories of overtime that we have right, right? Yes. and I think we're, we're working on that as well okay and uh, we'll provide I don't know how whatever information we have right. we'll provide it's what we what we're keeping we're going to provide on article 30 um, we're working on the cost we should be able to provide that to you today the cost of the article 30 that you have proposed which was uh, the 2.67 to be figured out over the span of five years. And then you asked for an additional one that I have in my notes. Yeah, zero. zero and then zero year. on year one, and then bro and then 2.6 broken down from two to five. Yes. Okay. Uh, I will, and for article 30, uh, I have the Moody's rating report uh, that I'll be forwarding to you in the email so that you can look at the information uh, on our bond rating. On Article 12, um, yes, for a uh, number of FTEs versus per capita for the last two census data. You have the number of FTEs that we have. Um, we didn't have the one from last census, that's why. The, the FTEs? Right, from the last census. I got the most recent one here about two years ago. Okay. The census is online. No, no, yes, but he's asking for the FTEs before, the contract before. 
or the census before what is it how, how often do it's they do it 10 years right the census every 10 years so yeah which is we don't have data on, on the FTEs. we know it's fluctuated so you want to know what the FTEs were 10 years ago right mm -hmm. if, if we have but you said you, you guys only go back two or three years so you were going to check yes, we'll go back on the contract we you it wasn't have, in the, i don't know if it, we can the contract it just, has the FTE. Staffing. Yeah, but we added that. I don't know if two contracts or one. If we did three, it wouldn't be in there. But I, if it was, I think we added that number in 2014. On the contract, two contracts think, right. not this one, but the yeah, previous 2014. One. We I think so we, we yeah. amended yeah. Article 12. Yeah, so but you include that too. It would be in actually. In you can actually find it in, in the budget. In, in budget. budget. Ten years ago, there's the FT listings in the back, and then there, there you would, you would just need to count. To count all the positions in there. Mm -hmm. The department 24, with the exception of the <coughs> civilians. And I think back then we had the civilians all under 24, 20, so it be, should be straightforward. I can show you where, where that is. Okay, we appreciate that. Okay, and uh, for Article 12, the number of households and rooftops, um, the city is going to provide utility numbers, which can be found at the city of Laredo website under the finance department, uh, ACRF under table number 17 for growth indicators. Uh, and we'll provide you with that, that link as well. Um, that would also, the utility will also address the business and commercial properties. Otherwise, that that information is kept by the uh, Webb County Appraisal District on the um, whether a, a property is taxed as a uh, res residential or business. The uh, number of bridge crossings. I'll provide you a link from the city website that will um, show the uh, monthly bridge reports. And we, uh, Oscar has a list of some that on our side we got. It's just to, to confirm we're comparing okay. apples to apples or not. Yeah, it's all uh, at the same on the um, the index report should be the the same, whatever is available on the website. And we provided the uh, official roster um, on the ninth. Yes. And then the numbers allotted per unit by division. As per the CBA, we have that in the contract. Okay, yeah, that's in the contract, and we don't actually keep anything specific on that, so we don't have any info specifically on that. Right. Okay. Well, the, the CBA mentions that. Yes. It should be. Okay. All right. So um, during the caucus, I'll be sending you that information. And then I'll go ahead and um, start. I'm just going to go in numerical order on the um, articles that we have for presentation today. Okay. There's Thank you. Six. I made a correction on this. There was a typo. Oh, okay. So that's good. Oh, I'm telling my team because they have a, 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 a copy that. <laughs> so um what you're finding with article four is actually a um Oh, and I still missed it. I printed out the wrong one. This is actually supposed to be an amended proposal. So <laughs> on the top, it, so on the top, it's supposed to say City of Laredo amended proposal uh, for 2022-09 um, or September 15, 2022, 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. And this amends the City of Laredo proposal uh, made July 28, 2022, 1 p.m. And the reason it's amended is because we had some discussions on the table as to the intent of what this was. And uh, rather than wait for you to do a counter proposal, we listened to what you said. And so we, we were proposing some new language to just identify um, or address the issue that, uh, that, that we saw. In this particular um, article, 
it was that it there wasn't an issue per se other than it, the language needed to be clarified it was very broad and if somebody who was not involved in the city in the fire department or the city negotiations or somebody looked at this contract 10 years from now it would be unclear uh, on 4.3 what intergovernmental uh, contracts would be or affected and we heard the fire union in that, you know, the services provided by the Laredo Fire Department are vast and many, right? And so what we did was rather than just say, um, you know, any governmental contracts to provide fire or emergency medical services, the intent is that um, the one association representative would be able to voice issues with regard to intergovernmental contracts that involve services from the Laredo Fire Department. That would be the mean the employees and the fire uh, fighters who are affected, they would have a union to be able to, to provide a voice to the, to the city negotiator. And that doesn't mean per se that they're at the table arguing or negotiating, but that they have a place at the table on the city or uh, they have a place on the city side from when the city negotiator has to have their talk and figure out what their authority is and figure out strategy that um, the uh, association has a representative that can provide opinions and voice issues and that's the clarification to the city's designation designated negotiating representative uh, as a advisory capacity only. Uh, so that's basically what it is uh, we're amending it we heard what the concerns that you had and we agree. And so that's why we're proposing that and um, and if you would take a look at that and if you have any questions on it, let me know, otherwise uh, we propose that if you agree that we can possibly tentatively agree to this article today. Yeah, I mean I think uh, we appreciate the intent that you guys have provided for this, um, do you guys have any questions on this. I, uh, I just have one question. Um, I don't think it's an intergovernmental agreement with you and agree. Um, as far as when we respond to the school, like in elementary or in uh, you know, in Rural, mm -hmm. I, I guess my question is, since that's not an intergovernmental agreement, how do we address liability as far as uh, our fire injury? Uh, is there anything that we have? That's a legal uh, question. As far as? As far uh, we, we don't have an actual intergovernmental agreement with UISD, but we will respond to outside the city limits into another city, as examples Rio Rural. Um, to the actual school. Now, if, is that under like a mutual aid that's agreement? That's what I, I'm asking. Or, since it was in I, I thought I, that we had I, stood back in a couple of calls and said, no, we'll, we'll wait here at the line. And I thought we, we well, weren't not responding. For the, not, for the not, not for UASD, not for UASD. Uh, or, or uh, responding to law enforcement or border patrol uh, officers now. And we, we will still roll out. And the, no one has an issue with that. I, I just, the concern is our or what do we have in writing that would make sure that our firefighters if injured or, or well uh, you know because the firefighters are going to be acting within the course and scope of their employment and under their duties they would naturally be covered by number one the line of duty that's provided by 143 as well as whatever um the city does cover with regard to line of duty injuries or anything that right. happens there i, I just the we, city, we, we do have a with the, the county of west there's a process to follow and right. which we're responding within our scope. If as a supervisor, I decide to roll out without the city manager's approval or the city manager giving direction, are we covered? As far as the dispatcher sends us out, because a lot of times in the firefighters will run. If we're dispatched, um, we went to a, a cardiac arrest. It was thought well, to be was covered as long as you're on the job. Right. That, that's exactly yeah, our, right. our, our risk management side of workers' comp. As long as that the firefighter is in the in the furthering the progress of his career, then it's a worker comp. It's, and it's a covered comp workers' will, will comp. Approve? Yes. Okay. Same thing if if one of the engines or an ambulance okay. is damaged while out there and they're doing their scope of service, then uh, Tima will take a look at it. But most likely, it will. I, I just workers' comp has denied as far as even injuries inside the city as far as like that's not an injury but that's a with, different with conversation but if it, so. if, an, if a firefighter is injured in the line of duty they they have the right to fill out the twip one and we encourage it and we'll take it we'll look at the process of it if so, yeah, issue, some we'll, language it. well and one thing that, that on the fire on the workers comp administrator side on the workers comp administrator side each event is unique in of its own right. and has its own facts and circumstances so even though it may be claimed to be um, an injury on the job, 
We may, um, that investigation has to be done by the third party administrator, correct? Right. So we can't guarantee that just because somebody files a worker's comp um, claim on a on an issue or an injury that it's automatically going to be um, approved because that's why there's a third party administrator right, there's, right. and we're required to do that in order to be able to provide this kind of workers comp um, coverage to right. to to so I so with that with that this concern. this has yeah and this has to do with the recognition of negotiating authorities with regard to intergovernmental contracts with the government entity um including the county of web because i know there was an issue there yes. uh and the ability for the union to have a representative to voice opinions concerns and suggestions on what needs to be in the intergovernmental uh contract so that particular issue may be a separate issue and it's unique on its own again i don't have the details of it and we may need to uh if there's an issue and something like that has happened where uh somebody was not allowed to even file a claim you know i believe that they're they're all going to be able to file a claim for workers comp and then have to go through that process if it's something where they were denied that opportunity then that's something that needs to be looked at specifically for that issue so okay. i bring it up as uh understand the intergovernmental agreements or as, as that's the case say with UAZ or SDPS or Border Patrol. Council has always taken an active role and we've never denied the service or, or brought it up as an issue. The whole is just a liability issue. Will the firemen be covered? Okay. If I may, are there MOUs with regard to I don't know if there's MOUs. So there might have to be something that comes from council that allows the fire department to enter into an MOU with UISD Border Patrol to determine scope of whatever your duties are going to be in those situations. That could that could clarify a lot of the issues. Right, there. right. So, and, and that's, that, that's going to be something outside the scope of this particular article in the collective bargaining agreement. In that, here the article four is only talking about the recognition of the um, negotiating right. authorities and giving the union an opportunity to say, "Hey, we have these issues. This is right. what happened last time, and we need to fix it." Or, you know, "Hey, this is a suggestion to make this intergovernmental agreement a little bit better." Right. So, and and I guess. Maybe can we include intergovernmental agreements and MOUs as far as as these come up? It's I mean I think, I think that this is already see. limited to or whatever the intergovernmental contract is, and intergovernmental contracts are defined by the statute. MOUs are something different, and sometimes those need to be done in an emergency or very quickly. Uh, and I understand and, that we're just bringing up and, the, as far as an MOU comes up. We just want to make sure that's covered. If, we're not asking to negotiate. We're not asking to be just advocate the table as an advisor capacity. So we're not. Do, what we're doing was uh, clarifying the language. We're not intending to change the intent of what was happening already. Oh, I don't, I don't and so, we are. right. Is, is, is so uh, covering the the reasoning for this article is to make sure the liabilities issues are taken care of. Not no other reason of. The and, and, and the city is not going to negotiate something that would um, waive any kind of, you know, or not give well, cover we're, we're a firefighter on, on something that they're going to be expected to provide services for. So that's not, so I mean, I don't, an MOU as far as and MOUs? I'm going to leave it as intergovernmental contract because MOUs are something that I think are something different. Intergovernmental contracts are defined by statute. And so that's we're going to I think we're just going to leave the only intent was to clarify this, not to add any any other um, into this. Okay. Just uh... For a little bit of information, um, does the city currently have a contract with TML what kind for of workman's comp? Oh, they are third. They are our third party administrator. And what in? I guess this kind of also to, uh, touches back to the article we we're talking about firefighter duties, and this kind of goes hand in hand, uh, specifically why we tried to get a better language or a more solidified language on that <clears throat> because of this also, uh, because of the fact that we're responding to outside, depending on what duties we're performing at that time, if it's inside or outside the, con the county, depending on special details going out to the state, going out to different uh, resources. Um, yes, Article 8. Um, so. Actually, that's like, the next article we're gonna do to discuss. That's what I'm saying, like, like um, this would still fall under 
intergovernmental contract because he's, this is a contract affecting specifically us. Or does it not? Oh, are you talking about it? With the, with a contract specifically with TML? A what's contract in it? with TML? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I don't understand. No, this is this is the what the intent of this has always been. If there's an intergovernmental contract with mm -hmm. the county of Webb or another governmental entity or political subdivision mm -hmm. that would uh, provide fire services or affect the the firefighters and in, in the what their what their duties are going to be what are encompassed right mm -hmm. what they're expected to do pursuant to the laredo fire department manual mm -hmm. that says this is your job description and you're going to provide services related to firefighting mm -hmm. emergency medical services and whatever else it says and as um as delegated by your supervisor or the chief mm -hmm. right pursuant to your duties as a firefighter and, and an ems provider um, TML IRP as a third party administrator is an agency and I don't believe and I need to look at this, but I don't believe that it falls under a political subdivision okay. and we're not providing services to them. It's basically an insurance uh, deal and the workers comp we must be able we must have law requires that we, we provide this workers comp there's certain statutory requirements and so that's what the you know the them and as administrator, they have to follow the statute and all those requirements. Yeah. And that, that's basically where I, I guess our concern is to the jump off point where the initial language of this was put in because at it that is, time, I don't believe it's ever been the practice. No, no, and I'm not saying, I'm, yeah, I'm not saying, I'm not saying to like team that. up, I guess that's where the concern is coming because of liability issues. It's not the fact that we're responding. Is the liability coming afterwards? And like I guess well, has there been any issue or specific instance where a liability issue has been has come up? No, but it opens it up. Not that it opens it up, but that possibly is always throughout there. Is it a, a denial or as far as uh, just because we're so responding we, to the outside? So the city it. doesn't have control over right. the denials of workers' comp. Mm -hmm. That that's its own separate process, mm -hmm. and we cannot bypass that process or interfere with that process, right? So that's. That's a separate process of its own. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about liability and intergovernmental contracts, and this is your, and this gives you, this article has and continues to give you mm -hmm. as the fire union the ability to discuss these with the city negotiate, the designated city negotiator for mm -hmm. those contracts, so that you're heard. We, we're not, we're definitely creating an avenue for that mm -hmm. and continuing to create that. Um, what li what specific liability issues are you talking about? Because there, there is a whole, you know, it could, it, it's so general. And I understand, you know, we're, workers comp covers firefighters um, in the course and scope of their employment and in their duties. Uh, and I don't know that there's been an instance that anybody has been denied even being able to file, you know, file a workers comp claim. Hmm. That's, well, I, 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 mean, I don't the, under, the issue I, is a, the filing, I think the issue is just, is just the denial for reasons. Uh, I mean, there's so that doesn't have anything to do with this particular right, right. contract. Mm -hmm. And I and I believe that that has to, you know, that's a whole separate process. Mm -hmm. There's an appellate process for that. There's mm -hmm. due process rights available to the firefighter mm -hmm. to be able to uh, appeal of, of determination on a claim like that. And that's uh, separate and apart from, you know, with the city, the city doesn't have control mm -hmm. over that process either. You know, we hire a third party um, administrator to do the workers comp process, but um, the city doesn't make those decisions. It's all pursuant mm -hmm. to the requirements and right. the statute that we have available or that we must for follow. We have where we have to follow. Right. And, and I guess uh, that, that's where the, the question arises. Um, one example that, that uh, Abu Chapa brought up that has brought up in the past is when, when workers comp was asked an example if it's ordered by a supervisor hey let's go help the, the civilian there on the street push their car to the site and a firefighter is hit by a vehicle they clearly stated that's not within your job description that's not your duty um i'm looking through the intergovernmental interlocal uh government uh, agreement section of the statute right now to see if it will cover or not or who's responsible for it we just want to make sure that it's not that we don't want to do it we just want to make sure the firefighter is covered so I, I think that's where the concern is coming from. The so scope I think, of duties, because because workers comp, it'll be understood by us as a department. Oh, these are your duties. And but even a regular civilian, I me mean, as a civilian, would go down and help. I'm not covered as a city employee. No, I understand. We practice. just and, and we, yeah, and that's not even subject to an interlocal well, or we, intergovernmental agreement. Well, we brought so. up in the past an example. 
Yeah. So is it like, are we talking about a workers' comp issue? Are we talking about being able to provide input for negotiation on intergovernmental contracts? Right. Well, and, and there's multiple issues. I guess when we discuss this, the re the whole reasoning for this article, and I know it's just you want to clear it up, but the whole reason for this article is to make sure that the liability side is, is covered to the best extent possible. So if, if, if I may, there's already statutes in the, in the government code that says um, if the city were to furnish fire suppression in the absence of a contract, the city would be liable or would, would bear all the liability. I, so I, under, so I understand that, but the, the city stance is, oh, we, you know, we contract with this third party. So the third party is uh, going to decide whether we're going to cover or not. And what, what you're saying is, is, is yeah. true. We don't have a contract. Well, with, with uh, TML, you don't have a contract with TML? We have a contract with TML, and they do. There are third-party administrators, right? And they're they're responsible statute. for saying whether it's covered. But or not. it's also no different than when the firefighters stand at the corner and they do feel the boot. Right. No one's concerned about being hit, you know. Well, the I, boot. there is there is concern, right? Assistance. But they're still doing it. Right. So we, the city, TML has not denied a firefighter if they're doing their scope of work. Uh, it goes through a process. Well, they they have, but th that's another issue as far as. But that's the an individual side. issue. Right. Right. Yeah. That's an individual issue. All we're trying to say is, issue. is we're, not a and, not and a global issue. No, no, right. and I understand that. And, and I think what what Charlie brought up and, and the issues that have been brought up, and maybe it, it, it can be discussed in another article. The the main the main concern is just whether a firefighter will be covered or not, whether an order is lawful and workers' comp will cover or unlawful. Now the city will say yes. We're going to cover you, and then workers' comp comes and denies it, and then the example is what, what you're stating. Well, that's why we contract with them. It's up to them, and it's out of our control. They follow state statute, and they're mandated to follow state statutes. They they will not deviate from it. If a firefighter is injured, the liability is on the city at 100. percent So the city will if, take if care. If they determine that it's I I tore a ligament at a fire, and workers' comp denied it, saying it's a, not an injury consistent with firefighting. So I understand that's the medical side. And we, I don't think we're bringing that up right now. What we're what we're concerned with is, and then I, it may not be under this article. We're concerned is narrowing down whether a supervisor knows that that order is covered, that order is not covered. Fill the boots a perfect example. If it's not going to be covered, then I agree. Maybe so do you have a? I mean, at that we're already discussing I guess, I guess the this, counter proposal. This goes, yeah, I guess this goes more into Article Eight. And so that's then, if I can right. go into Article yeah, Eight yeah, and fine. address I just, that I just because to ask well, you, when we have issues like that, that's why we put proposals on the table, right? Yeah. And that's why that's why we discuss it or say, hey, this is what we're thinking I'm about addressing. And, and what we have, what we have, is that we have uh, Article Eight mm -hmm. was placed on the table by the union um, on July thirteenth, mm -hmm. yes, yes. and that includes the duties, mm -hmm. okay. right? And that includes yeah. the duties, and there was no changes proposed in the duties by the fire union because it seems all encompassing and it seems pretty, but we're gonna, we're gonna address that because I think that it needs to flow in addition and, and reference the Laredo Fire Department manual, which has the job descriptions of firefighters, mm -hmm. right? And then the only proposed changes um, huh. from Article 8 by the union was to change from six months to 60 shifts on the um, acting pay for assistant driver and um, and then something in 8.5 to add orders and directives to um, injury, of illness, or death that occur during work hours, right? So so we're going to go through that, and um, I'm, I don't think I've hand, I haven't handed it out yet, right? No. no. I think we should take one article at a time. That's what we're doing. That's well, why I was trying we're to kind figure of out. All over the place I know. Now. That's why we're, you know. Yeah, no, I think I'm in the, because, we're gonna have a calendar because we, can, we don't. We yeah, we're, we're coming up with um, we're trying to make the most out of our the time at the table. And I don't I, I think you were here, but I like to a lot of the stuff, you know, people may think that, you know, exchanging stuff and talking about it, you know, that that ha that is very relevant and important. But most of the hard work and putting together this and evaluating it, analyzing it, making sure that it fits with what the city can do and what's beneficial to the firefighters. That all that happens back in the caucus when we're crunching numbers and looking and looking at operational things. So what we're trying to do is um, make this productive. We've talked about Article Four. It's a good segue into Article Eight because it brings your issues with duties. Mm -hmm. And so I'll pass this along. So we're going to have it with Article Four. 
Yeah, we're done with Article 4 and we're moving on to Article 8. And I'm just going in numerical order because I thought that that would probably be, that's the way the contract flows, so that would probably be the easiest way to do this. That's fine. And so this is our counter proposal uh, to the fire union's proposal of July uh, 13th, 2022. We're placing this on the table uh, September 15th today, 2022. And I put 10 a.m. just because that's when the session was started. Mm. Um, but in light of the duties, you're right, you know, uh, firefighters, th this lights out what the duties are. In addition to um, the Laredo Fire Department manual, um, actually has a job description, which is under man management's rights to create the job description for, um, for its firefighters. And for firefighters um, on the Laredo Fire Department manual, and this is the updated one today, or it's the one effective today, 2022, um, Article 18, Section 2 actually uh, states out the duties, and those duties are that firefighters shall perform all duties delegated to them by their superior officers. Firefighters shall acquire the knowledge of all various types of apparatus, tools, and equipment in use in the department and under the direction of their superior officers maintain such apparatus, tools, and equipment in their care or possession in a clean condition and in readiness for operation at all times. Firefighters shall con constantly promote their physical and mental welfare. Courage in the face of danger is one of the traditions of fire service. There was, sure. Are you reading off the fire department manual? Yes, the Laredo the Fire Department website? manual. Okay. Is it on the website? So I can bring it up. I'm just... uh, I don't know. I don't have the link to the website. Well, I'm, but... but I'm. That's why I'm reading it. So for the purpose well, of putting so, it on the record. Can we get copies of it? Or... I can provide you with a copy. Okay. I just wanted. To... Do you, do you not have access to the Laredo? Uh, that's why I was just asking if it was there. So, yeah. Fire department manual. You don't have access. To I never heard of this manual. No. Is it the policy uh, manual or is it the? Is it when you said manual? Is it the SOPs or is it? I think we've ever been provided with any. Sort of... So this well, is we, not we something SOPs, new. It's I, probably I, the SOP. I have it under. I'm not. I just if, if it's under the website, I can bring it up here. But... I just wanted to I can read it. All. I will. I'll finish reading it and then I'll provide you with where where it is, what it's specifically from. I have it as Laredo and and. Uh, I'll provide you a copy. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I think it's that part of one. And then it also states on section eight, and this is uh, article 18, section eight, other duties, firefighters shall perform such other duties as may be prescribed by their superior officer. And it may be the SOPs. I, do, yeah, I, I don't, the SOPs. It, it may be the SOPs. I just need to get the official title. I just have it saved under Laredo Fire Department manual because I'm not okay. within the department. Yeah, and I apologize for that. No, it's fine. We're just... But it is the job, just, it, is provide, it is something that should be available to you and provides the job description for a firefighter. Right, right. right. Um, I just, I just sure, sure. I, I, I agree. So, and, and I think it is important, uh, and I'll provide you the copy of that because what we decided, you know, what we're looking at is in this duties, um, Article 8 is not meant to curtail or change whatever the, the fire de firefighters' duties are. So, what I did was just go ahead and include that reference. Firefighters shall only be assigned to perform duties pursuant to the Laredo Fire Department manual and as delegated to them by their superior officers. And that just that says this is where it's coming from. This is who it's coming from. Uh, related to firefighting, fire prevention, rescue, emergency medical service, salvage, overhaul work, and maintenance of firefighter equipment, apparatus building in the fire station's grounds, cleaning and mowing, or any other related work. Uh, nothing else has changed. It says tire changes on vehicles other than automobiles, pickup trucks, man and sport utility vehicles would not be included as a duty of firefighters. Employers shall provide the training and special equipment in accordance with Article 1112 necessary to maintain all firefighting equipment, including all vehicles ready for duty status. However, if circumstances dictate the need for contracting for tire change service, the district chief responsible for his or her respective vehicles 
has the discretion to obtain such service. Painting and weed maintenance around fire hydrants would not be the duties of firefighters. Um, and so all we're adding is just the clarity that it would be pursuant, and that may need to change. I put Laredo Fire Department Manual because I didn't have the, the official name, and we just need to be, be able to put the official name. If it's the SOPs, um, we will do that. Uh, but as delegated to them by their superior officers, that is something that is part of the paramilitary organization that you are a part of and part of the uh, chain of command. And so that's what that accomplishes. Uh, on 8.3, um, you had proposed the 60 shifts. We've left that as the 60 shifts. I do want to say that even though it was, uh, it seems to have been done like that from this contract and even possibly the prior contract, I don't know how far back that goes, uh, 60 shifts is actually more generous than what the clear language of the contract says. Six months is, a, is an actual time period. Uh, 60 shifts comes from, uh, there's about 10 shifts, approximately 10 shifts per month, correct? Mm -hmm. So that's where the 60 shifts comes in from. The way that the, um, the duties of acting uh, or assistant driver um, have been calculated have been by shift. Yeah. And so what's what's been, ha it's more beneficial to the firefighter in that, that somebody can reach those 60 shifts well before the six month is six month period is done. So if they do overtime, they did exchanges, I think that's what they count. As long as they have a 60 shift with that additional duty, uh, that shift goes towards the 60 shifts, and so they won't have to wait that six month period. So I just want to point out that that what has been done was more generous than what the language is saying, and the city recognizes that and is just willing to to leave it at the 60 shifts and, and leave it at that. It provides the opportunity for that um, that acting pay as a driver to be achieved more quickly than the actual six month period. Okay, and some and in some instances it may take longer if they don't have a that 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 deal and they they get uh there it takes them a whole year to get their 60 shifts and that that could possibly happen too i mean most um, of the time uh, speaking as an assistant sure. myself I, my people don't even reach those 60 shifts okay yeah. but there are some instances where i've checked there are some instances yeah, that, that people have reached their 60 shifts well before the six month well, well, period not, well yeah. <clears throat> it's been, those are rare occasions right but even if they do uh acting rank to further notice they they get hired as a driver and not out of an assistant driver, the assistant driver, even if they work exchanges or, or like you said, overtime, I think even then they scrape by 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 July. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it it it's just a matter like of circumstances, sure. right? Sure. It, it doesn't but, happen as often that they reach it in five months as opposed to right. it happens mm -hmm. more usual where they reach it in October, November, December. Okay. You know? But we're we're accepting the um the union's proposal on that. And then on eight point five, um injury, illness or death occurring during work hours are presumptively work related. That language is already in there. We're not changing that. Uh, said injury, illness or death includes its incidents arising from and it it the current contract only says duties. Um, you had the union had proposed taking out duties and adding orders and directives. Um, upon discussion at the table, I think that we um, we all I, I thought that there may be a consensus amongst everybody that we leave duties in and add orders and directives. Uh, and I think that would cover the base and the intent of what this was um, going to address. So it'd be uh, incident said injury, illness, or death include incidents arising from duties, orders, and directives at the direction of a supervisor and or for the benefit of the city. And uh, so that just it makes it more encompassing and I think clarifies some of the issues and the concerns that uh, you had with regard to, well, you know, we don't have an interlocal government mental contract, but my supervisor said I need to get as part of my duties, I need to go um, provide fire or EMS service over here, and I did it, and I got injured. This is this this covers that. Okay. And if you um, and I invite you, if you have the, I'll visit with the chief and my team as to the proper name of uh, where this Article 18 firefighter uh, job description is, and that's that would be, of course, uh, amended on 8.1. I have it in as the Laredo Fire Department manual, but it, it probably has a different name. 
Okay. Any questions there? Not for me. Okay. I have a question. I'm sorry. You mentioned uh, the intergovernmental uh, agreement, right? Or I guess you're looking at chapter so, 781? Yes. Right. So yeah, it states there, so I, I guess my question is, because it references uh, who we can contract with as far as an agency. And if we go to 771.002, mm -hmm. so the agency includes the department, board, bureau, commission, court, office, authority, council, or institution of state government, which school it would include the board? Under that definition, I think it would include. I know we're kind of getting off topic. So well, I just as a question to before so we come back to, with a counter. Right. Yeah. So when we're going back, I guess we're going back to Article 4, yes. 4.3 is what we're talking about. So with regard to the specific language in Article 4, says an intergovernmental contract with the County of Webb or any other government entity or political subdivision. Right. And normally um, a school district um, should be qualified as a government, is a it governmental is. entity. It is. And I know there's a big talk about intergovernmental agreements. If I may, I'm yep. pretty sure it's synonymous with interlocal agreements. Interlocal agreements. Yes. Interlocal agreements are contracts. MOUs are considered contracts. Yes. So it would cover MOUs. Except it, it, it would. Go except ahead. the 791.006, it requires it in writing and it requires it to reference the statute that we will be civil liability will be covered. I just want to make sure do, do we have that and if well, we do that's fine even okay. in the absence of a contract the city would be liable well it says for city. law enforcement it doesn't say fire even even for it, it says law enforcement it, it says law enforcement? Uh, in the absence in the absence of, and let it be in the absence of a contract if a municipality the court furnishes law enforcement services to another municipal county the governmental unit that requests and obtains the services is responsible for any civil liability that arises from furnishing the furnishing of those tech services. It, so, it so says those, law enforcement, but not fire service. So these intergovernment, what, before we move on, what's a, what section are you reading from? What's the seven nine Chapter uh, 791.006. Yes. And then the, the definition of agency is 771.0021. And I know that covers it. All, all I'm saying is that if we do it just if I guess if do we have a writing and there's a reference to chat the statute and if it so, does I'm, and I'm whenever whenever an intergovernmental or interlocal agreement is being negotiated it's always uh, vetted through the legal department mm -hmm. uh, and there are uh, there are checks and balances at right. the city with regard to going into we just don't sign something that somebody sent, puts no, in front I'm, of us I'm, I'm so not using, uh, right no no and I'm just saying just for, for the sake of the public who 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 is not familiar with the way those kinds of things work right. yes it, that has to go there's legal requirements and we always go through the the department will always go through the especially the legal department will always go through the legal requirements to make sure that they are met that that's not that it is a valid contract and not a void contract and that we cover uh the city's liability right and the, the reason i bring it up is that uh i have no issue with the language uh, being proposed in article four I'm just asking if uh, I know Council has approved for us to respond to UASD outside the city limits for to respond for DPS mm -hmm. or patrol. No one has an issue with that. I'm just asking, do we have an agreement and there's a reference to shop the statute? If there isn't, there should be one. Right. And if what we can do in the legal department is figure out which agencies that Council has agreed for the, to lend the fire suppression or you know EM, EMS right. services. And then we can create one. Right. And okay. what this would allow is for us to get your input as to what should be in that MOU, okay. which is why this particular provision is very beneficial for you, for you guys. All right. And that includes any MOU. Yeah, and, and that's all this article is intended to ever do. And, and that's what I just said. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And we're not, and, and we're certainly and that, not going to. We wanted to yeah. keep it that way. We we're just wanted to make it clear so that yeah, everybody yeah. knows. I mean, we're not going to agree to terms that are bad for you guys. No, no, no I, I, we, we've never said it. It's just, it's just uh, the whole issue is the liability. That's all. Of course, of course. Right. Are you good on four? Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> Any questions on eight? Um, no. Okay. Yes. I just so remind you that you say you're going to look Yes, I just need to make the sure that title. we have the correct, the correct title, and I'll provide you a copy of what I was looking at. That's fine. It's not, nothing is being created. <laughs> I yeah. just want to ensure uh, you we, that we, 
Because I, I didn't. Mean, just I, everybody here had never heard the, that title you used before. That, well, I guess it was my. I guess this what it came to me is that file, and I just called. You know, I kind of. It says Laredo Fire Department Manual, but that's just what somebody saved it under. Yeah, <laughs> so that, that's, that's fine. fine. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead the, and look uh, at it. And, uh, we have the date of because we've never been given a. I have to look at the that document is huge. Well, so. yeah, no, we, well, the thing is, we're only given uh, paper copies of it. So if there was something updated, we may not. I was reading the excerpts, and it's in the code of ordinances. Okay. And then okay, so we'll, 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 we'll clarify, we'll, clarify what, all what that. We're reading. I was kind of looking through it. Okay. But okay. I don't know that's where I you got it from. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're understanding what what documents mean. So uh, the next article, again, I'm going in numerical order, is uh, Article 10. Um, this is, again, an amended um, article. Uh, the city first proposed this article July 28th, about 1 p.m., uh, and the union has not counter-proposed, but when we proposed it, we had a really good discussion about this article. And so what, we, what I went ahead and did is just to move things forward again, uh, I took the consensus, and I think what we discussed at that table, uh, at the table at that time on July 28th, and uh, tried to included in the uh, language that was proposed. Um, here on Article 10, 10.3 uh, was just, uh, we added, uh, did not report so that someone knew what DNR meant without having to go back to the um, definitions uh, all the way back. And that was just a clarification. The uh, issue was in 10.4. And nothing other than, this is the one where firefighters may be granted up to five exchanges. Um, we did not want to do anything with the to change the exchanges. The issue was that um, the supervisor supervisors or the people who were um, setting the schedule or the rosters for that day for each fire uh, fire station uh, weren't getting notification of of uh, exchanges. So they were expecting one person and then somebody else shows up, and it was just kind of you know. We just wanted to um, prevent that from happening so that when they set their rosters, I think they said what it said about 7 a.m. for that day, roughly, roughly unless, about unless they have that they, they know they know who they're working with and who who's you know where they need to be. Uh, so this is and we heard that. Um, we heard what you said in terms of uh, what we had proposed before, and we're hoping that this language may fulfill that. Uh, it just want it just provides a requirement that somebody tell somebody mm -hmm. that the exchange is going to happen, whether it be a previously scheduled. You can email it and say, "Hey, we, we're going to exchange this later." Or if it's an emergency exchange that happens mid shift, <clears throat> that you just tell your supervisor, "Hey, um, I am." It doesn't require it in writing or anything, but at least that they make some sort of contact to say. Mm -hmm. Hey, I have an emergency exchange at this time, and this is what's happening, so that they know what's going to go on as soon as as it happens. Um, so, and in order to encourage that, uh, we also did this. Firefighters involved in shift changes must notify the station's district chief captain or acting captain prior to the shift to be exchanged. Otherwise, the exchange will not be granted. And we put that in is because on ten point four it says uh, firefighters may be granted up to five exchanges. And we're not intending to take it away. We just don't want to make sure that that the firefighters know how important it is to notify their supervisor and say, hey, um, you know, it's a, and it could be either the person uh, doing the exchange or the person that's going to be filling in for the exchange. So as long as there's some sort of notification um, be right before the, the shift happens, uh, we would ask that, for instance, if it's a regular shift exchange, that it happen at least maybe, I think, 10 p.m. If, if you know that because they're going to or at least before they set the roster for that day um, about 7 a.m. Uh, that that would that would suffice but that's the intention of this is just to make sure that we we integrate some sort of notification system and make sure that the firefighter knows that hey you need to notify some 
your su supervisor that's doing this so that uh, they know who's going to be on the shift that day. And that's <coughs> Are there any questions on that one? Uh, not so much a question, but just uh, I guess make clarification on it. Uh, when you're referring to an emergency exchange, it's not actually mid shift. This is more of a last minute in the morning. Hey, I'm not going to make it. I just woke up. It's okay. five till. And that's what considers an emergency exchange. So not to go under, understanding on that. Okay. What, that's so what, emergency, it could probably, it could, it, it could possibly happen mid shift, you know, say somebody has a, a relative who's very sick or something or an emergency, a family emergency or, and that we're not intending to change any part of that. We just want to be able to, that they say, Hey, uh, somebody's going to be there for me, and yeah. and that's it. And so. that's, that's what I'm saying, like because it does refer to emergency exchanges and the, the amount yes. of it. So that's what the intent of the emergency exchange was. It's more of a to prevent the DNR in the morning, and that's where it's limited right. to to to. to um, on the notification, and I understand you said it doesn't have to be in writing. We're, we're not putting but, a requirement uh, in there. <clears throat> but it, just as long as the supervisor needs to know mm -hmm. who's going to be who's going to show up. And can it be both your supervisor immediate supervisor or the one on shift or um, does it really so who I, you know whatever's in the policy no yeah i i do, whatever is in the policy because okay. it would have to be whoever's setting the the so, cal the, the calendar if, the roster for that day for yeah the, it, it, if i may i mean when the firefighter requests the exchange he goes through his own supervisor right so you're just saying that you would have to notify Somebody within your rank structure. Right. Somebody in the rank structure so, so they can tell the person whoever's doing the, the, the schedule. The yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We just need notice, that's all. <laughs> the same when you submit leave, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you have to go through. Anything. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, we're just making sure. Yeah. And be before we move on, the this is you known. Exchanges is one completely different issue than a payback. It's not. Yes. It's not the same meaning. So, because I, I believe on the original language, it included uh, the payback, where this is a completely different. Uh, on the original language that we had I proposed? I think so. Yeah. Let, yeah. Me, let me look at that. Yeah, the original article. I know the original one. We're going to wait for the caucus. Are we going to finish the comment? No, we'll wait for the caucus on that. Just just I don't of, think that just we, kind of to yeah, understand. we didn't intend to, I don't remember that we had anything about the payback and we didn't intend to, the only thing that we needed was notice was and that's okay. it. So okay. on the exchange okay. and that's no. all. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going uh, article 11 is next Uh, this is our uh, counter proposal uh, today. It responds to the fire union proposal made on uh, July 13, 2 p.m. This is with regard, with regard to health and safety. And um, the only change that had been proposed, oh no, there was uh, two different changes. Let me look. On 11.5, if any employee is required to submit to a blood or urine sample pursuant to the city's drug and alcohol policy for post accident or post injury, such employees shall continue to work. However, will not be allowed to respond to any emergency calls or operate any machinery and or vehicle or may be placed on administrative leave as deemed necessary by the fire chief with or without pay. Uh, you had proposed the fire unit had proposed on 11.5 to take out without pay. I don't know that um, this is currently what is um, what has been in the contract and what has been working. I don't know that uh, there has been any instance. Uh, do you know of any instance where they have been placed without pay on something like this? 
but we need the the fire chief and the, the the fire chief to be able to if he deems necessary and he has to have grounds for it to place somebody on uh, administrative leave without pay for an egregious incident we need to um, at least have that to know how serious something like this is if there's a uh, an injury or post accident that may involve some sort of drug or alcohol um, issue. So we're proposing to leave it the same leave it with or without pay if there is any instance that this has been a problem, then we need to we we can address that it may be an individual or case by case basis but but the fire chief does need the ability to to have that have that. Um, available to um, to do. Uh, on 11.6 um, if an employee is required to submit to a blood or urine sample pursuant to the city's drug and alcohol policy for random drug and alcohol testing such employee. Uh, will continue to work Oh, which one is that. Is that the one um, you That's hit. Per one. You it should be yeah, there's a random that should, That's the be, random and this one you hit proposed that it would be, be done during, during business, business hours. hours. Yeah. So um, it was unclear when you were saying business hours we we're talking about from eight to five Monday through Friday, uh, the issue that we have here is this is what. The firefighters are subject to random testing and random testing is done every day it's done by a computer system, I believe picks the random for each day. Um, there was one instance that was referred to about somebody that had to get tested after uh, five o'clock PM. And then that's the only instance that's ever happened and what wound up happening in that particular instance was that the fire that particular firefighter had been tagged for a random drug testing that day, but he had had an exchange uh, up till 8pm I think it was only for half a shift or i'm not sure how much of the shift it was. But he showed up at his shift at 8pm and so the random had already come out so that's why then they um, they were accommodating that drug testing and I believe. Um, that any time a random drug testing or otherwise is done that the drug testing people come to the fire station and conduct it uh, at the fire station is that correct they're not required to go out anywhere. No, we don't do that anymore. Right, and so that was that one instance, but I believe because it was random uh, and it was at the station uh, that's just that's just one instance that it happened in this this entire time. The other item is that firefighting, as you know, a firefighting and emergency medical service is a 24 hour, seven day a week uh, service. And so we have firefighters on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the randoms are usually uh, done or issued in the morning. So for whoever's who, who whoever's there, if they get tagged by the random or picked to, to be random testing, uh, the city coordinates that the test the people testing doing that random drug testing actually go to the fire station and do the testing and so forth and that's usually um, accomplished in the morning correct after yeah. that. Typ in, typically it's between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. Typically. I know there's been examples I know shortly after and I spoke to you Mr. Nieto, mm -hmm. that there was another individual that almost that next couple of days where that individual was tested probably way after maybe 5 p.m. when the individual was at work. Is this random or a it was post a random. Yes, it was a random. Where that individual was tested in so, the past 5 p.m. I'm trying to look for it because I know it gets on it now a picture of it. So, so and we're saying past 5 p.m., but he was still within his he was still within his shift. He was he was there since the morning. Right. You know, he was there since the morning that he said usually these drug tests happen at you know eight to nine a.m. where they should be happening. You know, and I I've seen we've seen many cases where, you know. A lot of these other uh, individuals are getting tested just randomly where they're having to face you know, units out of service for a couple hours because you know they get pulled for a drug test at a certain time you know but they don't show up till two three hours later so our individuals they can't leave the station they have to wait there so they have to accommodate the unit to where they have to just specifically get out of service or an ambulance out of service because you, you can't go to call because you you have to I guess touch for a so. If if that is the case, then we need to be made aware of risk management is to work with our vendor because that's not the contract. Uh, the contract is very specific on random testing. It's very specific on post accidents. So it depends if it was a random test or if it was a post accident. Mm -hmm. okay. I, mean, I, I can give myself an example. I just got tested like three weeks ago. Uh, I didn't get the phone call to 11. So myself out of service, waited, showed up like 12.30, 12.40. The person showed up to test me. Weekend or Okay. And the reason why we went with we're trying to do the business days because for the most part, most of the city employees don't work 
on Saturdays, right? No, no, what we're, what we're saying, no, no, we're not comparing. What we're saying is, how can it be random if it's a large pool and it gets shortened during the weekend? It, right. it is, it, it is a total <laughs> random <laughs> test. <laughs> Just saying. Well, and, and I believe yeah, the biggest issue is operation. Right. 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 We just want to address it. <laughs> and and their language, and, and if they're not doing the city side, well, yes, that's we, another issue, right? We need to be alerted. We just want to make sure that we brought it up that way. It was brought Absolutely. up to the light, you know? Yeah, they have, they have specific contractual provisions, and we can't call them out on them to cure a deficiency or a, a default of the contract unless we know about it. Because um, on contracts like that, they have certain remedies, and you have to provide them a, a a cure period, give them a letter and say, hey, you're not following this provision of the contract. You need to do it within 30 days. Otherwise, then we can get another vendor, you know, something like that. And it's pursuant to that specific contract, but we, the, it, we need the information so that we can start pursuing that and fix those issues. That way it doesn't affect operations, et cetera. So. Is there also a mechanism to notify the employee or all clear? We can. Well, if you weren't clear, you wouldn't be working no, that day. I can I mean, assure I, you. I, I was not concerned as as, at all. As soon as we get I was not concerned at all, but I was saying, but I wanted as to keep in As soon as, as if you're working, <laughs> that's a negative. If you've been pulled aside or we've called your department director, that means you're not going to work anymore until we get that second specimen done, if this is what you're wanting to do. So if you don't get that second call, you're negative. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, the, you're good. Oh, I, I wouldn't have, I <laughs> unless wasn't you want, worried. unless you want to report something to us, then no, 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 I wasn't worried. Okay. I wasn't worried. I was just. I think the issue was uh, there's been a couple of new requirements. Like, do I go back? Do I don't go back? If, and if it, was, they, it was unclear, so if they received notification, you're clear to go. Rule of thumb is if we haven't called you back sure. or we haven't called your department director, then you're you're good. good. That's the whole thing. The last one I have this morning um, for this session is Article 31 on Disciplinary Action. Uh, this is the City of Laredo counter proposal of uh, September 15th. Um, response to the fire union proposal of July 13th, 3 p.m. And in this article, uh, you had proposed uh, a new uh, 31.3. It said that if the uh, fire chief were to form some sort of review committee, that oh, the uh, uh, fire union would have a representative on there. Uh, we're proposing to leave the disciplinary action article the same. Mm -hmm. uh, that's our proposal. Uh, the fire, the only the ultimate authority to issue discipline falls on the chief. Mm -hmm. He's the only one that has the authority to issue discipline. Um, nor That's a management right. Mm -hmm. uh, within his management right, uh, when he's investigating um, issues involving discipline, uh, he does have uh, normally a chain of command that he can refer to. Uh, and this chain of command can provide analysis, recommendations, etc. Usually when um, and, and there may be times that it's not necessary. There may be times that he um, he he asks for a review committee, but that review committee consists of management, and uh, he only it's advisory only. And uh, so we're just going to maintain that. And uh, with regard to the disciplinary procedure that could possibly lead up to the disciplinary action, uh, I believe it's in the um, the the firefighter who is subject of a disciplinary investigation or action has always been advised that they can have a, a union representative available the union rep representative can attend with them whatever uh, parts of the process that they need um, and uh, the, you know so the union's always involved um, or a representative if if the firefighter so chooses to have that representation um, in the in the process on the employee side 
So uh, our proposal is that uh, we leave Article 31 as it is um, and um, and make no changes. Okay. And uh, for our that's those are the counter proposals that we have. We presented uh, one, two, three. I thought we had five. Four, One, eight, two, 31, three, four, five. Yeah, yes. Article four, article eight, article ten, article eleven, and article um, thirty-one. We also have um, where we had proposed. Um, a no changes to Article 6 on the rights of management, and we had proposed that as a TA, and, and so we wanted to see if, we, if there was any response from the union. Is that on that? The union didn't present any changes, and then we, um, on the last day, we um, just, we, we looked at it and, and determined that there was no changes, and so we proposed that as a tentative agreement. Okay. And then some of the articles that I just presented, we, we may be able to, depending on, on after your caucus, if there's any questions, mm -hmm. um, I would like to see if it's something that we could tend, that we can Address start that. adding to the tentative agreement list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can whittle it down. Can you discuss on the different interaction for us? And um, Charlie, I know you weren't here. Um, we have these. Yes. Um, I went ahead and signed them. Okay. And we have everybody? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Here we go. We'll finalize the, um, the sign in sheets. But for today, um, I don't know how much you heard, but we have a lot of work that we're still doing in the background. Okay. Uh, we only had three working days between the last session and today. Mm -hmm. And that, um, like I said, I have a lot of the most of the upper management here at the table with me who have a lot of other meetings and other things that we're fitting in and they're you know that we have to fit into the schedule mm -hmm. so we we're gonna from our perspective um we're gonna use the rest of the day to caucus and work on um work on the issues make sure we provide you the information that we discussed at the beginning of this meeting mm -hmm. uh look and see and we're working on a bunch of other um kind of proposals and costing and evaluating things uh we did ask that uh, i know that you're wanting uh, you asked us to look at article 15 and article 30 and so we'll be doing that but we would also like to see if the if the union can provide a counter proposal on uh, article 16 so that we can evaluate the entire economic impact um, when we're looking at those proposals uh, and then i think did y'all you all have everything that you need for Article 29 yes. information wise? Yes. Okay. And so for today. Can you still check with the numbers? Sure. We still had some questions this morning that were answered. Okay. But, uh, and, we, and, and we may be able to help answer those questions while we're here today. Uh, but yes, as far they, as. They were, already, they were already answered. Okay. So we just need to go in there and make sure we do. Perfect. The math. Article 15 on that one, you know, so where we feel comfortable with numbers. Sure. And we've already, and, and as you know, we've already placed some new money, a um, significant amount of new money on the table for a five year contract. So um, we're not going back. <laughs> so that's already there. And, um, and but we need to evaluate um, what, what we can do. And we need to look at the, we, from our side, we have to look at the whole picture um, because we don't want to, um, we want the whole contract to be cohesive. We want to make sure that the, that the dollars that we do have that we can provide the most value to the firefighters as well as the city make them count the most um and um and that's you know that that's a whole that that's one of the goals of making sure that you know the limited monies that we do have that we make them count and we give them the most value so and uh and we are looking at a five-year contract so okay. So, so and so basically I don't know that uh, we're going to have any more anything else to present today in a public session mm -hmm. and it would be um, 
so we're going to be working in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that y'all may have some counter proposals today. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we're going, but we just need, when we go back, we'll start working okay. again. So we're, we're going to conference or we'll come, we'll come back. We're ready. If you have counter proposals, we're ready. Um, or well, if you I need just, to caucus before you present your right. counter proposals, yes. that's fine too. I, I so. think we'd like to caucus. That way we also go over the, the ones that were presented sure. today. That way we can we agree can. or, or okay. come up with the language if necessary and uh, TA and hopefully some of these today. Okay. I, I Maybe believe present some that <clears throat> also TA. Sure. So going back to the understanding, like, we understand you're going to be working throughout the day. Um, right. And we can come back at 2 30 just to see if we're ready. and. Send okay. that off and then we all can continue working. Okay. Yeah. That's, that sounds good. Um, and, and before, and I think we've already established, I can't remember if you were here because I woke up really early this morning, but um, we're going to post for the meeting for the 22nd. Okay. Um, I wasn't able to make the 26th work. I'm not available that day. Okay. Um, I had another, um, an, another previously set hearing that I had no control over. Um, if that changes, I'll let you know if we mm -hmm. make sure we, if we have enough of the 72 hours, but um, just think about it for the 22nd, we may have to, um, hopefully we'll be close, closer to the end, mm -hmm. but we may have to sign an extension to, uh, you know, to get, to get there, make sure we don't um, run out of time. So, so that means we're working till eight o'clock today? Um, well, we're, we're working, <laughs> yeah, we, we've been working nonstop. I haven't slept much, so. I understand. <laughs> So we will be working. I don't know that we'll be having a public session. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to, that we're going over and, and costing out, make sure we have everything organized. And uh, so I, I probably anticipate that we'll have this set public session, we'll have lunch, then we'll have the other session, hopefully about 2.30. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for the day, I think we'll just caucus and mm -hmm. we're just gonna continue working um, after that. Yeah, I, I think just the uh, Article 30 would probably be one of our biggest priorities. We do have a, a pending uh, a pending pension vote at the end of the month. So if yes, yeah, if if 30 can be maybe TA, we can inform our members properly of of what the the agreement was here at the table. That way, they can more or less make decisions based on um, changes that could affect them. You know, okay, and and that's also why even 15 because it also ties into yeah, and that's why we're looking for the the counter proposal on the 16 because, like you said, it should you know it's a total. When we're looking at it, we have to look at it. Okay, we have all this all these articles that are have an economic impact, and so we need to see what where we're gonna how we're gonna negotiate that, how we're gonna strategize on getting that for for the benefit of everybody, and so, you know, without any without the Article 16 on the ad pays uh, so that we can evaluate everything else. We, um, it'd be hard to just say to TA one and then at the, and then at the detriment of another one that may be, may have a, you know. So you want to group them all together basically in a discussion? Yeah. Okay. Just, just like you, just like you have to group your 30 and yeah. your 15, we have to look at it the same way. So I think that we need to um, start having the economic discussions as a group and and um, at least that way we can you know we're working with the count all the counter proposals that you have that way when we come back we'll say okay this is what we can work out so okay all right okay is it we're we're the ones it's on its way okay so okay. Lunch is on its way. so then 2 30 okay. would be the time to Back for me. Sure. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're up and running. Um, <clears throat> right now, we're just pre some of the papers. But one of the individuals is pre okay. some of the papers. Sure. So we did go over some of the numbers. Uh, we are ready for, uh, for coming back on Article 16. Um, what sure. uh, 
Yeah, this is the TA for for Article Six, the Article Ten. Is it changing color? Is it done? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Change it. Is it the twenty thirty? Campus. Okay. <clears throat> Three six one. Three one. Three one. Three one. I, I mean, he said it was done. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, for Article Six, I know last meeting we had uh, basically you had proposed so we can TA the management rights, the yes. right, the rights of management. Uh, we're ready to TA on that one. Okay. The only thing is uh, the individual with the, our ambassador is not here, so okay. we'll go ahead and I, sign in and then just. Yeah, I'd like to review the the, okay. the TA, um, so we can wait. Like, uh, if we need to wait. But I need. I want to review the TA and make sure that it's there's side no changes. Side. Yeah, side, just side by side. Okay. Yeah, that was the one that. This is the one that you proposed last time. Okay. We have no proposed changes to. Okay, to so it's no, no changes. Yeah. Okay. We can, we can sign afterwards if you thought. Yeah, we can sign this one at the end. This one has some writing on it. I don't know. Oh. Here, yeah, you're yeah, on Okay, well, the intent of the um, tentative agreement is that there's no changes at all to Article 6, right? Yes, yes. And whatever the current yeah, contract is, yours. that's what we will... We're in yes. the okay. current language. Okay, I, will, I guess we'll go ahead and sign it with the, with the understanding that it just stays the same. Yes. All right. You want to go ahead and sign them? Let's see. We only have one. No, you're going to sign that one. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Two forty-seven. The ambassador will be here in about thirty minutes. Okay. We're only doing one, one copy. We didn't I don't have the second copy. Oh, that's, it, that's those our copies copy. you, you gave to us, and I. We, oh, okay. We, I we should. Just, we just handed over one of the copies. Yeah. To Charlie oh, said. I see. Yeah. I thought y'all had printed it. <clears throat> no, 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 no. It was it was y'all copy provided last last meeting. Okay, I'll get another. I have extras, yeah, but I think I wrote extra on them. Yeah, Let's we'll see if anybody has an extra clean six. I 
And we do have a <laughs> Hey, what's and that little mark on your copy still done? Bring it up. Oh, so we have one signed TA, we'll do an, an extra original okay. whenever we, we sure. find another one or if we have a chance to print because okay. I ran out of toner and I was fighting with that printer over there. <laughs> so I'll put this one here. Okay. Also under Article 10 for the duty hours, uh, we propose no further changes. Sure. Like just to accept this. No. Okay. Yeah. So we just yeah. need to on 10 we need to prepare a tentative agreement. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll print Let's another those one. Those ones she has the ones that are ready to sign. And then um, let's see the other I kind of made some notes about some articles that are should be very close to tentative agreement, if okay. not, that we can probably discuss and I have uh, article four. I had article six, but we just signed. Oh, sorry. No, no, that's okay. Um, again, I was just going over the articles that I think we're very close on and could possibly TA uh, okay. today. And that would be Article Four, mm -hmm. the recognition of negotiating authorities. That's one that one of the ones that we proposed today. Mm -hmm. um, we already signed six, uh, eight, which was the one that changed the. Um, <clears throat> it was the duties and the sixty shift change. Uh, Article Eight. Article Eight. Again, the manual one. Oh, yeah. the one where we need to correct the manual and I, I sent over and oh on that particular one I sent over the correct name uh, and that would be Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. It would be the uh, City of Laredo Fire Department Policies and Procedures Manual. Um, the current manual was issued in 2017 by Chief Steve, Steve E. Landin. And uh, those manuals are um, available at every fire department. And they're, they're basically used for every, I guess they're the SOPs that are followed for the, um, all the duties of the firefighters. So that that's the that that would be the one change. The reference would be the City of Laredo Fire Department Policies and Procedures Manual. And I sent over a copy of just the. Um, I'm, I don't know if I can send over the entire manual. I was waiting to receive it because I don't know how big it is. So I sent you just the copy of of the pages that I was reading from, and it was uh, Article 18 on the firefighters and their duties. But. Um, But I think uh, Article 8 is uh, close to a tentative agreement. Um, we're going to prepare 10. I uh, think that uh, the other articles that are um, possibly ready for tentative agreement are very close are Article 11, the health and safety article, Article 17, the additional hours. For, for that one, sorry, uh -huh. for the additional hours, if I'm not mistaken, we were waiting for clarification on the, I, I remember when you guys initially proposed it on 728, okay. 528, remember we had that mix up with the two callback versus, yeah. callback versus stay over, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Yeah. We were, I mean, we, we, can, we can come up with the language on our show, <clears throat> we can counter on that one. To fix the okay, if you I, want I to remember, counter, yeah, we'll counter, that and one. I'll look back and make sure that we get you the information on the clarification. But I think if we just talk through it, we can probably. Um, that's what I'm saying. I think it's probably close to a tentative agreement that we can. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I, I'm just letting you know the intent. Uh, the, the, I'm just switch it. Okay. I'm just back All right. So that one, seventeen, and then uh, the other one is um, we intended. We proposed to leave thirty-one the same, which is disciplinary action, and um, 
The same as it states mm -hmm. in the contract now, or yes, Thir I think thirty-one. We we propose it this morning, yeah. and then possibly thirty-two, which was a clarification, or it doesn't change the. It's just a clarification and, and doesn't change the intent of the um, thirty-two maintenance of standards. I, th I think for those we're still working on uh, make possibly making counters, okay. so we, we won't have that ready today. Okay, I just think we're really close on those. Yeah, so yeah, yeah stay for the record. We're, we're almost there. Okay, so that I just wanted to. I'm just trying to outline the ones that we can focus on <clears throat> trying to get off the table, mm -hmm. and that we can get off the table more quickly, and then deal with the big, the heavy ones. Okay, uh, as. As you guys uh, mentioned, uh, you wanted a, a counter on 16, and we worked on that during our caucus. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just speak on it if you want. We propose to, uh, on the changes that were talked about, basically not to address it, um, to leave the, okay. basically the wording as it states in the contract as it is now, and calculate anyway. with that. You're missing one, so I'll, get, I'll make you another. Oh, copy. Right. There's, there's, oh have you have one. another extra yes. copy? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're countering with 16. Uh, as we mentioned before, we represent our membership. Our membership, this is prime, they're one of their primary concerns, one of their primary stances on the, what they, they'd like to keep. And this is just our membership speaking on behalf of us. Uh, we, we feel like you guys needed this information to, to budget accordingly. So we want to provide that as, as uh, soon as possible. I know you, you mentioned that earlier today. Uh, and, and we felt it was our duty to provide it as soon as possible. And we hope with this, we can hopefully speak on other issues like Article 30, possibly Article 15, to, 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 get, that, to get that moving uh, as, as quickly and as efficiently as possible. OK. And so the uh, counter proposes to leave the language the same. Yes, okay. yes ma'am. Now, and the membership understands that the current, um, as per, as the city proposed for Article 16, um, the ad pays would not affect any of the, the firefighters already receiving ad pay at, as of today. We, right. Yeah. The the mentality, uh, I may be speaking right when it comes to everybody's perspectives on this but uh we, we have don't, a, a we don't divide our membership we have a brotherhood kind of mentality and i don't think they uh, and i may may be misspeaking as to whose intention but the perspective across the board majority is we don't want to divide our our union membership to two groups and hurt people who are not here and we want to incentivize people with these incentive pays to uh to join this department and get the best of the best for this department. May, may I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So would, then would you consider a, an equivalent, if not close to an equivalent of a fixed amount versus percentage? I think yeah, that, yeah. Then that wouldn't divide anyone. I don't think it's a... It, it's it's percentages. Mm -hmm. I want to know if, if it would I, be on the table. I think when it comes to this article, I don't think, you know, us as a union, we would have to vote put into, into writing something that we think is going to get passed, right? So I think any, anytime you, you mention getting rid of that percentage, you know, it's not something that we would be able to pass to our members. Um, I think when it comes to percentages, you know, our members do a lot of stuff when it comes to this contract, especially, you know, EMS service. And I think, you know, other departments provide other entities a whole different department for that. You know, we're compensating our guys 10% to do a job of what it would take to be able to do. There's Have only one one city that I know of. There may be two, but there's only one city that I know of where the EMS is its own department and not integrated into the fire. Um, 
Ma huh? Macan. Well, Macan. maybe Macan, but City of Austin is the biggest Austin one. No, uh, Austin yeah. has a county. So, I mean, City, yeah, City of Austin does it also. County has the EMS side, and the city does just, just fire. Actually, no, it's the city. The EMS yep. is a city department, and it um it it's uh, under a meet and confer agreement oh. with the City of Austin. So, but it's called the Travis County um Austin Travis, Travis County, County oh. EMS, but it's the it's an, a department under the city, <clears throat> and so they're the one major city that does it i knew i think the other one was mccallan mm -hmm. i knew there was possibly one other but those and that that poses a whole different set of um that has a whole different set of factors and issues that go along with it but most of the majority uh of fire departments are now expecting and require that their firefighters not only be fire certified right but they also require paramedic certification. That's kind of the becoming the industry standard as they're trying to raise the standard of services that are available to cities across uh, across the state and, and, and quite frankly across the nation. Um, so paramedics, um, paramedic and EMS service is now also recognized under Chapter 143 as part of what a firefighter does. It's not only fire service but includes EMS, and uh, that's why it's now covered under 143. So um, as far as that, I think that we, the city recognizes the, the important services that are provided to the city. The problem is that the percentage um, becomes a, you know, the percentage ad pay as a percentage of a base pay, which not only just includes the base pay, but includes um, any kind of overtime. Uh, that becomes something that um, can can run away from the department and, and have a, a very large expense. Uh, as you see in the cumulative register and the current costs, uh, which I don't have right in front of me, but I think that the ad pays alone were above $6 million per year currently this last year. What was the number, Rosario, on there? Oh. Or Jesus, do you have it? I have it. Yeah, because I was going to ask if you had seen this. First and so, year. as as um, and the reason this Article 16 becomes very important and relevant in our analysis of how number one we can uh, make sure that we give um, some sort of raise to the firefighters, but also create a sustainable contract that we can continue to sustain and budget for. Um, any increase to the base pay increases uh, ad pays. $6.4 million, uh, the largest of the 6.4. Uh, the first largest, so it seems here, is fire assignment pay EMT, almost $3 million. And the second largest comes in at $1.2 million with fire certification master. There are two that have the 10%. The, the, yeah. And we're assuming, and we're assuming what on that one four oh seven FTEs that spread amongst. No, this is actually the current FTEs. The, actual the FTEs. current actual FTEs, which so is three three ninety. Excuse me. Yes. Yes. Well, no, I'm, so. Oh, I know that. Well, just and just for the sake of so, every, like we all can hear because every everybody's comment and all this information is extremely important in this discussion. If we can just try to not talk over each other, um, because I want to make sure that we capture. Um, the questions that we address the issues, uh, but this is uh, what's the current FTE on that? Is that like three ninety? Was it three forty six? This is this is last fiscal year. The numbers that we're looking at the last fiscal year twenty twenty one, but we have we are over the four hundred seven because of the academy. We have four thirty three, but the the cadets are not getting the ad pays, correct? No, no, right, right, okay. We're about three forty six. Okay. Well, one thing to note there is on the four years we have the four years. For that, those incentive pays. So you notice in 17, 18, which is a four, four years going back, we're at 5.2. The following fiscal year went to 5.5. And then from there, it jumped half a million to 6 million. And then 6.4, which is another half, uh, 400,000. So just these are all from base pays? But that's all that's this that's is just ad pays. So those are so the graduation of the yeah. well, uh -huh. if, if you all want to see, but no, we just the breakdown. before um, yeah, during the caucus, one of the we emailed you uh, the information that requested, which included the cumulative register, which has all those actuals on there. When we gave you the actual, uh, it came from the cumulative register, and so we just gave you the entire cumulative register because that, oh, the that detail. 
For example, it, it, it provided the detail as the different categories on overtime. Go, go to the detail. Oh, but this category. is on overtime, not add. Uh, no, total total this, is this is a cumulative add. register which includes the, the information that you have. The, what we're talking about is the part of the cumulative register that talks about the what the actual payout for these ad okay. pays, only ad pays are. And it's and it's spread amongst if it's if if the total is six point um six point three or what was it six point eight million dollars let me tell you what it is. that's spread no, no, between uh three hundred and no, I mean I'm familiar with it yeah, but, but, the, but there's ad pays in there that let me show we you. don't consider ad pays like yeah. uniform cost, uniform maintenance allowance, uh longevity pay is different from what you're even from this article, it's a separate article. It's not an article 16 or on duty pay. But they're all they're, they're all some sort of compensation that go in additional in addition to the base pay, right? And I I, I agree. They may not they're not all like uniform pay is not part of the percentage ad pays, yeah. correct? I mean, even and, uniforms themselves. But um and then I think if you look at the cumulative ad pay, the average on what the ad pay is as a percentage is a little bit above 17%. Because you can you can get two of the percentage ad pays and the highest that you can get are both each 10%, um, which I think that you probably and correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not intimately familiar with how, how many years it takes, but I'm thinking about it takes between 20, 10 to 12 years to reach. That twenty percent is that a right years. about average? At least, at least twelve years minimum. Okay, at minimum. least twelve years. Yeah, and that's not including the academy. That's right. from data so like firefighter certification. That's right. It takes twelve are... years to get your master's plus education added on there. But that seventeen percent or the six million you're talking about, in my eyes, you're inflating it when you're at uniform, uniform maintenance, and longevity pay. So we're to, not inflating the pay. actuals. This is the actual, and, and with well, this. on the technicality of an ad pay. We, on the technicality of an ad pay, I mean. So uh, it's the percentages. It's, it's you're it's talking it's about taking out the percentage, but the majority of that's going to be the percentages. Yes, yeah. Because what you're going to do is on an average um, salary of, and I'm just going to use the $100,000 a year because it's easy, mm -hmm. a 17, you know, 17% 17 ad pay or 20% ad pay on that is an additional $20,000 on top of that. Um, that's that's a large chunk. When um, when you look across the board, every other department has um, specific ad pays and they do ad pays for EMS and paramedic certification, EMT and paramedic certification. Um, that's not an unusual ad pay, but the ad pays are much less, you know, um, some some have um, and we're, we'll look at those comparables, but some have say 125 uh, a month, and then there's an additional ad pay for ambulance assignment, just as you would here, there's a, a percentage and then a couple of other ad pays for being assigned to an ambulance. Um, so, so that's what we're looking at. There's a, the number one, the ability to be fiscally responsible, the ability to budget properly for for these ad pays because part of the ad pays are tied to um, or the percentage ad pays are tied to overtime, which we never know, you know, if, if there's a, a a huge need for overtime because of an event or you know some sort of emergency or something happens and we have um, wound up wind up with a bunch of vacancies that we can't fill right away. Um, you know, th things like that or things that we don't have control of, but that we are still contractually obligated to make sure that we pay those ad pays. Uh, so that's one of the things that we're doing. We're not looking to, um, again, take away from the ad pays that are currently being paid. We're looking to an equivalent of a base pay that we could provide. And um, we were hoping that we could collaborate with you on some sort of idea or some sort of plan in order to um, help bridge that gap. Uh, but I see we'll, we'll work on this uh, and we'll we'll look at it in its entirety with the rest of the economic packages and or the economic proposals uh, and we'll look and we'll look at this. I guess if I may, uh, Roxy, just to kind of yes. mention, we're not in. Uh, uh, addressing Mr. Chapa's uh, comment. It, we're not inflating the ad pays, we're just listing what's in that category of ad pays. 
So for example, the uniform allowance is 187. So if you want to take the 6.3 million that we have in there, you can take the 187 out of that because that's a uniform allowance. And you can also take the longevity, which is 356 out of that. So your net incentives is going to be six million, approximately 6 million. And, and the, the percent, the ad pays that we're kind of looking at only is the percentages. So some of the other percentages, you can tell the difference right away from the ones that are percentages and not because they kind of pop out. And, and just to kind of mention it, like, for example, if we look at the one that's a 10 percent, a firefighter comes in at 70 at 70,000, which is the entry level, he's getting $7,000 for that 10 percent ad pay. While you look at a deputy or an assistant, they're getting either 13 and 15,000. So there's there's a difference between the ranks of, of, of that amount. If we look at an average, just looking at an average of what that is, it's about 11,000 for that incentive pay. So we compare that to other cities, that's where you can see what they're paying more or less for that same ad pay on, on those other cities compared to that 11,000 average that we have. Base, that is based on a percent. Well, if, I mean, if I may say something, so you're, you said deputy, we have three of them. Yeah. And we have 150 firefighters. That's not an average. No, no, no. No, it is, this is an average of just Everyone each together. rank. Yeah, we're, looking, we're looking at ranks. Because we can get an look, average. If you look at master uh, certified firefighter, it's 108. It was 100, it's 108 today, and it was 108. And then when you reference this clear 16, 17, we had 108. It hasn't changed. So only 108 people get what you say, the 20%. That's one third of our department is we're a department of 400. The, aver the average is 17%. Well, if, 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 if I may, it, so we're not even, I mean, start discussing raises as far as what you say is looking at. But the, I guess what's on the table for us, even, even if we attempted to go to the membership with the switching of ad pays. Anything short of what they're already getting would, 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 would return a no we'll right out of the gates. If, if right. I may, this isn't affecting anyone in your current membership. That's the thing. And you're talking about dividing the membership, who's being divided. If a cadet comes into academy and he knows of the possible benefits, if he doesn't like it, they don't have to apply. They don't no, have no, to be I, part I, of the brotherhood. I understand that, but the, the proposal wasn't, it was a reduction of, off of the no, percentage. No, no. So, so, no, 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 everyone was grandfathered in at the same at rate. Their Yes, this would apply to so, future academies and any cadets coming in through and that. That's, and that's my point, right? Even at what you're at right now, how would that even move the needle with our membership to discuss, hey, you know all these ad pays that you've known for your entire career? Yeah, we're just going to lock it here. And the first question is coming up is like, oh, really? And you're not what, what are we getting for that? No, it stays the way no, no, it is. No, 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 it stays. Oh, you're saying for the future? Yeah, anyone who's a firefighter? That's what they're talking about, how minorities quickly become majorities no. and it, we've seen it with our pension system we've tried to put everyone on the same page because what it creates is infighting we don't have a lot of turnover that like what you're and saying they don't have to hire on but once they're in <clears throat> we we've experienced this with and i'll give you the example of the sellback of sick leave at the end of our careers okay. there's two groups in the department and when that when they begin it when they begun there was no one in there we signed it first academy came in they're now becoming a majority and the big issue is always, why did you sell us out? Why did you sell us out? So well, we, we know what it does internally, and this is what we're trying to avoid. And we also know what it does externally and what it does to the actual fund or the obligation. Right, and but, right now, the pension, be, it's, it's the pension has an extremely rich, excuse me, the pension has an extremely rich benefit plan compared to a lot, any of the other benefit plans, a lot pensions wow. allowed to the city, correct? And yes. you're right. There's a majority, there's a minority, and it constantly changes. Now, in attempting to fix the issues with the pension plan and the funding of the pension plan, we all have agreed on this table that throwing money at it is not going to fix it. Right. The ad pays are in the same kind of, that's leading to the same kind of problem because the ad pays are quickly going to be increasing and increasing. Even if we didn't do anything, there's, there's more than likely going to, even if the contract stayed the same and we didn't give any raises or anything, I'm just saying for the, for the sake of an example, okay. there's still going to be an increase in the ad pays at some point. And that's because firefighters get to a certain education level? Because, yeah, because, they'll, they'll, they'll and, and, and that's the, the thing, 20%. because it's, everybody's going to eventually get to the 20%. We're not changing any of that aspect of it, right. but what we're trying to do is not only, okay, address that we will, uh, we see that we need to add increases 
uh, to keep up with, you know, the outside world and whatever is going on in here. And that's why we have put, we have put over $10 million of new money on this table. You had, we have, we have, we're not nickel and diming. We're putting it down for a five-year contract right. and we're trying to address a problem before it becomes an issue, just as the pension is right now. And that's what we're trying to do. And we're asking for your collaboration on this. And the, the idea is not to take away from the people who are getting ad pays. And we still want to maintain Laredo as a top level service and, so, and a service that people want to be a part of. The city receives at least a thousand applications for every fire academy that comes up. And we only have what, 60, 30, I don't even know, 60 or 30 uh, positions depending, per academy, depending, depending on, on what happens, right? So that's a lot of interest. And, and what we're asking to do, and we were just providing a starting point, is let's talk about this ad pay because it's gonna be the percentage ad pay alone, because it is going to create a problem. And even though the city's gonna, you know, even if you weren't gonna change it, the city's still obligated to, to, to fund that at the detriment of all other things, whether we throw more money at it, we don't have the ability to have firefighters, you know, uh, provide or fund it or anything like that. What we're asking is for help to address this situation so that we continue to have a, a, a very good fire department, a very good contract, etc. And, 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 and that's understood. And believe us, <laughs> uh, we went back last meeting, we discussed it, we, we, we discussed as far as what would it take to try to get the firefighters to even move on it. And we were discussing it right now, tossing ideas, but everyone, everyone's watching the this, these videos you know, that's right firefighters. we go back to the state this is a public meeting absolutely so at, at the end of the day though when, when we receive messaging you know, when we go back to our fire stations and and try to have this conversation even if we attempted it if it, it probably wouldn't pass like we the get, firefighters we're, we're are, getting the are, same our feedback. membership is so hard set on one these are one of those issues hey don't even bother bringing it to us so we tossed our own idea. Like, what if we lock in the rate? What if uh, we? Because the one of the ideas. What if we lock it in for everyone? So we're all on the same page. Maybe. So there's no di there's no division between current and later on. And as you toss it around to the firemen, and we recognize they, they that. Don't want to entertain the idea. We recognize that. And we, and we, we didn't. Tried. We tried running numbers. One we didn't even start locking in what we have. Right. Increasing 10, 20 percent on what we currently have to try to push the needle and harbor just. Oh, give it alone. So what if we would do a combination of both percentage and fix them on even the smaller ones? So I, I mean, so, look, I, at, look at some of the smaller ones and, and let's work on fixed compared to, I mean, we, we, we did surveys on other cities. I mean, but other cities allow more are, than just two. No, no. Oh, oh, we have, uh, we there, have there's some, so they may, may allow more than two, but their ad pays are low. Right. They're $75 they are, there are, a month. And here, and you have yeah. it. Right, but here we're talking about percentages. Yeah. Here, longevity pay, like Mr. Chapa yeah. said, is something different. Uniform right. allowance is something different. What we're focusing on is just the longevity pay. I mean, excuse me, the the, percent, the percentage pays, and, and that's what we're looking at. And so there so are a lot of other there are a lot of other cities, and it's it's hard to compare us, you know, just one to one because number one, the rank structures are different across the board. There are steps across the board because some people don't get, um, you know, certain increases here, so they rather do steps to, in order to um, create, you know, help incentivize retention, um, you know, and, and there's if maybe even if they have a bunch of ad pays, they're low, they're not high, they're seventy dollars, uh, you know, seventy five dollars a month, fifty dollars a month. If you find an ad pay that's high, like at three seventy five a month, there's pro there's not many ad pays. If if you look at it, yeah. at that I mean, particular one of those one of those issues of, of why like you're saying our fire department, uh, a lot of people apply. Why the shift? You're starting to see the shift in the state. We know we're wrong. So then, the state, one of the but, things, if you want to guarantee it, then maybe we can play around or just look and see if part of that ad pay, if part of the percentage pay, that we make it a base pay and then add that to the base because that way it would be guaranteed. Something like that. Utilize state utilize security. the current money that's going out, and you maybe utilize that to and add to the base pay because the base pay is already one of the highest in Texas. Here, if you if you on look base pay alone on, yes. on the base pay, yes, yes, and we and we will be we're gonna we're, we're working we're on all of this. We're, we're working on the on this. I'm I'm just telling you that we're uh, looking there's a, at it. the metroplex, uh, the, the base pay, uh, right? If, if there, there's some large cities that I was surprised that Laredo is able to compete with just on base pay, and well, that, so that has a lot to do with, with other the job market, and that, but but I 
I think the job market a across- lot of, A lot of pay in other cities- and What do you mean by the job market? Because right now there's, it's really hard to, you know, well, most- Well, yeah, like to get new jobs. But what I'm saying is that- Most cities are- The cities are, are, are different, right? We, we try to compare ourselves to the border cities. We try to compare ourselves to, to cities that are similar like us. Like, we, we can't, uh, it's completely different. A metroplex cities, the Houston area, some of the, some of the suburbs that are around large cities. You get into the into the weeds of it, and it, it's really hard to. You're right. It. Every right. department is different. Right. When you get into the weeds of it, you cannot right. find one department that is identical to the other, and it's very hard to find, say, compare because it's just the same. But, it's not. But, you, you but, but what I'm the, saying is that for a size of the city of Laredo, and for the amount of FTEs for the department mm -hmm. compared to even some of the larger cities, uh, Laredo has a, a pretty good debase pay. And we'll provide that information for you. No, because no, no, I think I, we, I when we we're coming we back with our proposals, when we get into the weeds of all of this, I think that's all very important to talk about. Right. So if maybe we I want just, to focus just, on base pays, which would incentivize people to apply, people right. to re but, retain and, people, and that's what I maybe that's something out. that we need to figure out. Where do we put the value where it benefits everybody right. the and, most? But, and the thing that I wanted to point out is what you mentioned earlier, the shift, because the shift in, in Texas was to move to fire-based, only fire, uh, privatize EMS, shove it out, reduce the cost, and you're starting to see these private companies go broke. Our county has gone through, I don't know how many companies and, and private EMS. It's unsustainable. Counties the and service, municipalities are different. But, but the it, the city of FAR is going through the same thing. The city of Mission is now going into their own fire-based EMS. And the reason why, the benefits of it, the services, and now the shift is coming back to having fire-based EMS. But because we're not proposing we're, that. No, 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 I know. But, but, but uh, you mentioned is that uh, the shift and how things are happening and why. It was part of one of your reasons. I didn't say, right? yeah. I didn't you said say that there's it. a shift of why now there's more fire based EMS or no, EMS being part of fire. No, we're, we're saying, well, yeah. It's, 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 maybe yeah. I, I, I think I the logic. I the think you misheard that. I, I, if I may, I'm sorry. Let's see. The, the logic behind these larger pay scales was because everyone here in Laredo was a fireman and an EMS, right? Mm -hmm. That is now the shit, and I think that's what you're oh, talking that, about. Oh, that's that the industry, industry standard. That's the industry standard now for fire. So, yeah. Right. For everyone. To have from, yes, and they're right. opening because their own EMS. Because EMS is now part yes, of fire. Yes, and that's the reason why, provides. because they, they, people are starting to see the, and the benefits of having a, a 143. EMS. Right. right. And again, we, we know where that comes from, but that's what, that's what I'm saying. What you said. We know that shift is happening because the service is much better when you have EMS part of fire and fire departments running their own EMS. And there's no question about the level of service, y'all. The level of service is great. What we're talking about is the sustainability of the money that we have, the finite resources. Y'all, I understand like in, in the private sector, you have a union, money taken away from workers feeds the shareholders. That's not, it doesn't happen here. This is not what's going on. It's because we have other things that the city needs to fund. This isn't going to, you know, some fat cap the records. It's going to the people, right? And those are the same people that you serve, the same people that need other types of services. Right. Don't get me wrong. Is it very important? Absolutely. But there are a lot of other things that the city has to fund and it's hard. We have to be able to balance making sure that you guys are, are, are compensated plus making sure everything runs the way this, well, the way it should I, with the city. I guess if, if you can explain to us how we would get away if, if we're capped at 20%. If it's not unlimited. It's a 20%. If we get a pay raise. You're capped at 20%, you can easily calculate but that overtime in. cannot be predicted. And over time, but over time, with yeah. percentage yeah. or without it, or a base pay, would, would you still, will, would when you be get overtime pay, you get your you get time and a half mm -hmm. paid based on what you pay, which includes your base pay, right? Uh, and your percentage ad pay, to, and it includes longevity. No, no. So, but the percentage ad pay is in there, right. right? So now you're not on, you're not only paying you're paying time and a half on the base pay. Plus so potentially, um, you know, an average of, you know, average of 17 to 20 percent on top of that. I think so that, and that's at that, time and a half. Right there, that cannot be because if they only have one incentive, that is the percentage, the hazmat, the rescue pay does not go up. It doesn't go up 17 percent. No, 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 normally, time. normally. Well, is, this, is this a, an attempt to uh, lower what the overtime cost is, or is it just based on because of the percentage? No, it, it I guess just to get in an understanding. And, and I, guess, I hear what that's what you're saying that the overtime is what you get away from going this. back you to can budget for the 20 percent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's a large oh, sorry, percentage I, I of the budget. I had, I had the floor, but go ahead. No, this was, I, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. This was, thank you. 
what I was trying, what I was going back is when you graduate, you gra graduate with EMT, so you get the first 10%. Mm -hmm. The next one you get is the certification for the fire, the the fire which is 6%. You get that one at five, six years, at your six-year six, mark. Six years, six years. So within no, six years, no, no, no. you're already at 16%. So our average is, the average that we're saying is about 17%, but in six years, you're at 16. So but what, it is an automatic, and we know that. No, no, you have to, you have to. Not no, you I'm have saying, to. A lot of people don't. <clears throat> right. And I'll use myself as an example. I got my if, master's, if I, my I master's about three years ago. If I can finish, because I'm going to lose my, my thought of uh, process where I'm going, and I'm trying to answer questions as I'm going. Uh, I'm going to answer Chapa's question. The 11,000 average that I'm talking about on the master's certification, we have 108 people in there. So the average, if I divide the a million something that we're paying, is 11,000. So uh, where we're talking about something getting away is, for example, look at, let's look at the EMT. The EMT average is 8,000. That's the average that we're paying on the number of people that we have. When we look at Corpus, how much do they pay for the EMT certification? About $1,200. So we're comparing 8,000 with $1,200. That's where we're saying it's getting away from us for, because the normal uh, ad pay that is paid throughout the state we're much higher than them. So that's what we're saying. We're getting away. Now, just to give you a little history, and I can't go back because when I came in more, more or less 20 years ago that I started working with the collective bargaining, the radio firefighter one was one of the lowest paid firefighters that was out there. That's when the incentive came, uh, it pay came in, but we were paying firefighters $30,000 back then. When you had a 10% ad pay, that was $3,000 more. Uh, 20, and, and back then we were doing the, the um, uh, the salary surveys on the, on the on the comparable cities. Eventually, that that salary surveys weren't generating any more increases. So then, from that point forward, we started doing fixed amount because we we got from being one of the lowest paid firefighters 20 years ago to being on the top. So now that temper those fixed 10 percent ad pays are having more of an impact on us because now you're looking at wages of a hundred thousand dollars. You know, so that's where when we say it's getting away from us, we need to have some control of that. That's where we're coming from. Not that, you know, that we don't want to, it's not that we don't think you deserve it or what, but it, that cause is running away from us as we compare it to other incentive pays that are being paid out for us. So. Yeah. That, and, the, and the overtime, it adds to that too, because that's a huge number of a, between, if you say it's 646 or 647 FTEs, I mean, that's split. That's just those we're paying over six million or about six million dollars just on ad pay alone, not including the base pay. So, what would be the? To, and I think when it comes to overtime, it's not something that, you know, it's any fault of our own because a lot of the time it's for shortages and stuff. But I think sometimes you have to account the saving that the city realizes by not hiring those positions as well. Yeah. Well, so. and it's not so much. I think that there was a, and, and I know there's a lot of factors for the, the vacancies that the city of Laredo fire department is experiencing. Um, most of it, I think, was a result of um, not having academies during probably the period of COVID or there was something that happened that um, they didn't have any academies for a while. And, you know, once you have a vacancy, it's not something that you can fill right away unless you already have academies in the pipeline. So although we have vacancies, uh, at the at, you know at the firefighter level, we have cadets to fill them. They're just in the pipeline and not in there yet. I think that we're graduating a, a, a class here in January and then one in Ju in June or July. So um, those vacancies, although you know they're they're going to be filled and they're um, in the pipeline, and we propose to. Um, I think that there there was discussion about another academy being. Um, not this fiscal year. Though. 20, 23, 24, right? This right. fiscal year is 15 days out. Yeah, right. Saying, right. It's not right. But there's system. another academy within that's, a year and a half. Right. right. And so we're, you know, they're working to have that in the pipeline to prevent vacancies. Mm -hmm. And and the uh, and the intent is to keep Laredo ahead of the curve uh, in terms of if you want to be ahead of the, you know, like we are already, we're all for that. But we need to do it in a fiscally responsible manner. And that provides the most value for for the dollars that we put the new dollars that we put in here, because, like you said, if we keep throwing money at this. Um, and the base pays go up all, all of the ad pays automatically go up 
for all the other um, all the other cities that have the normal uh, base or the normal just Six. fixed uh, ad pays, they negotiate. You're automatically when you're uh, increasing your base pay, you're automatically negotiating your ad pays in this particular case, yeah. right? So we have to look at both of those together. Mm -hmm. In other cities, they negotiate those separately, even though it may be part of a package deal, as you know, when people, when, when cities um, and uh, fire departments and police departments and EMS departments uh, negotiate on their contracts, you know, base pay is one thing and ad pay is another, you know, and here it's all tied together. So that's why it's also extremely important. And we can't, we have to look at it at the same way, just like when we were proposing you said well we need to know what that is before we decide right. what happens on ad pay because it's absolutely related right. it's what it's basically in one so what's the city's uh, stance as far as realistically are to go for a shift of, of ad pay because it, it would take you 30 40 years to eliminate the percentage pay right so, so and what so, we're proposing so, right now wasn't even going to start you know we, we provided a base and we were willing to talk but you know as long as we can start start fixing the issue before we have a huge a huge issue on a fund you know a, a, a financial obligation that the city may not be able to pay at some point we want to start some sort of process to get there without yeah. without hurting the firefighters without taking away anything what can right. we do well, like, like to Ms. reorganize said, and restructure this well, like Ms. Carlos said, do we entertain a dollar amount okay what is the city a dollar amount of what it is and, and increase of it, putting nice. everyone at, at the that dollar amount um and that's what we were hoping to that's what we were hoping to get in a counter we, proposal yeah we did propose in our proposal they have some amounts fixed amounts and it's like we like was mentioned it's only for those new people coming in everybody on board was in a continual way keep moving up with those percentage at pace but we did recommend or we did propose some rates fixed rates moving forward for those uh new firefighters coming in so there are some amounts in our yeah, but those were, weren't compared to what the department are earning right now. The well, they're, they're going to be much less. Right. That's, 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 that's that was our starting, we're starting point. Yeah. As, a, as you know, this is a negotiation. And when we first presented this article, yeah. I said, we want to start the discussion about how do we restructure this to, to, to keep this contract sustainable and to make sure that the city can maintain its financial obligations. Right. And attract well, uh, new firefighters and retain. So. Well, I, I guess we can go back and look at it and we, and we can move to another article i guess we could try to just realize what, what we're talking about is that if we made a move it would be everyone on in one shot it wouldn't be okay you know, and and, 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 we, and we're fine and, and, with and that they would, would but it we'd have to discuss whether we're fine with it. absolutely it, it, may, it, it may be an increase right because we already to, to get them out of their, their comfort zone so i mean we can look at it and, and see what options are and say well if any um, our, our attempt was so that the current uh, firefighters, if the, you're making that ten thousand dollar ENT ad pay, was not to take anything away from you. Yeah, but it, but by leaving him in a percentage, and what I'm saying is like, if we even try, it would have to be something like that, and it, it would have to be a change in the actual what the pay is. So you're saying seven eight thousand, that may have to increase to get to get the firemen out of it, right? But that's I guess something that it would be fixed and we would move over, but it's still going to affect the bottom line. What I'm saying is we can look at it and try to turn around with something. Um, we've had some discussions and, and see, and at the end of the day, we'd be, we would be able to put it a set dollar amount right out of the gates, but it would be an initial increase, right? Um, but we would have to see if, if anything was even, if our membership would even entertain anything like it. Um, no, I understand. Yeah, and the so, goal here at the city at this table is we're going to attack some very difficult problems. Right. And then at the end of the day, we each have to be able to sell it, right? sell it to, to have our own side <laughs> yeah. approve it. Yeah. And um, and you know I think we both we both have um, our battles on those sides you know yeah. but but that's why we're here and that's why we're talking about it because it's a very real issue uh, that is in the making and we're trying to address address it before it becomes a real problem okay. and and then it it you know becomes a problem that winds up where you know. We have, we have to cut FTEs, or we have to cut FTEs, or we have to cut, or there's yeah. there's a problem with app. We can't replace apparatus. We have an old, you know, right. an old right. equipment, you know, things like that. So, 
there's a lot of moving parts to this department. You all know that, and, and I know that as well. And, uh, and what we're trying to do is just make sure that it, it's a smoothly well-oiled machine and it keeps going and we maintain the high standards that we have. We want to be, um, want to be able to attract and retain. retain. That's always a, a, a goal for both sides and that everything is fair and that we can, the city, the city is able to budget and say, yes, we're going to agree to this five-year contract, no problem. And then when we come back and sit down, you know, we'll look at it again. And again, th these are, these are contractual negotiations. These contracts are good for a certain period. And every year we have to sit down and say, this is the, the thing that we need to address. And that's what and we're trying we, to do. We, I mean, we, we can go back and, and revisit it and see if we can have something for next meeting. Okay. I, I think, but right now we wouldn't be able to, but to move forward, I think we sure. wanted to move on to yeah. the to article. I mean, we'll, We'll go back and, and take that consideration and see if I guess because maybe we can take the next week talk to some members yeah. and then and then meet again on our stand. But uh, and this is a difficult article. Yeah. So so I, I agree. I know that it's going to take time, and we're willing to put that time I mean, in. All the other ones, pretty much the, the general consensus is all the same. This one's that. Yeah. Okay. I just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it always comes down to the money. So. Yeah. Um, but the next thing we wanted we need to address is, uh, and I sent you over the, the the electronic copies, is Article Thirty. <clears throat> Article Thirty, because of our pending uh, vote. Did you email them? Yes. I emailed them more too. We, we didn't print them out. Though. So um, you emailed me at 2.22. You emailed me, I guess, the articles that I had requested, right? Mm -hmm. Is there a new 30 on that? I uh, believe so, yes. I don't know if I have a new 30. The 30 I have is the last one that y'all proposed. The, the zero and then the 2.6 I'm broken it's up from two one. That's what you put over. I passed that to zero. The, the zero for year one and then the four years. Right. And then I passed okay. it out okay. one for five years as well. Oh, okay. I'll divide it up. And that's, what saying, that's what we want to talk about and basically shoot numbers back and forth on, oh, on okay. this issue. So, so the... It's, it's not a specific set. We, we... So you put, me. so it's the same article you just placed on the table. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure I didn't, I wasn't missing something. And we didn't, uh, I didn't print it out, but I did send over the costing. Um, no, because this is the one that you sent out. Well, it's passed over on the, the zero and the first. Did you get the one with the 2.67 spread across the five years? I emailed that one at 228. Yeah, I, uh, I believe so. Okay. Or which one's less? Which one costs the city less than normal? Here's what we start with. Oh, the Because with the zero in the first two, that less than the uh, That costing was uh, just for everybody's information, and it was in an email I sent at 1:25 p.m. to respond to the request for information that. That costing had the zero and then the oh, two point six seven on years two, three, four, five. Yeah, so right? Yes. Okay. Spread out. Yeah. Spread out. That's what she's talking about. Right? And, and, yeah. I got looking at the pension only. The pension only. Yes. Okay. This is this is no, uh, the sixty seven. Yeah. And then the other one is the other one in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
Tapi So um, they said, so, or where is the city at? We have to look at it. I mean, we we have our our proposal was one percent um, spread out. It was spread out over certain years. Um, that amount was a lot more than the way we proposed with the one six seven. The one we costed? Right. We did we did point twenty five, but I think we only had one, two, three, four years. I think that was So you did the one percent, that was a six million change. Two point six seven. So that was your proposal. That was your first the proposal. 1%. Oh, the two point six seven one year. One year, year one. And then the one percent. And then we reduced it to the zero. And then we reduced now we, we broke it at equally a lot. Cost. Our proposal initially was four years of increments of 25. Right. Oh, this is and that was a million sixty five the cost for that. But then the only thing is ours was tied into some others wording in the article. Yeah, and we, we had mentioned that the conditional wording was no issue. We even recommended to not that hold it to a percentage but to yeah, an active plan or an actual plan. We wrote it in so that it it's just to where to I don't know what the city stands for. We discussed what it was. The city living in the entertainment. So when the city proposed, the city proposed um, doing 1% over the first four years of the contract, 0.25% each. That was costed at a uh, million sixty-five thousand two hundred and one dollars. So this proposal that the that we put would cost overall after the five years. It depends which one do you want. The, the one where zero. it's zero the, the first point, year. Yeah, the lesser one for your less, proposal is two point eight nine eight hundred ninety three thousand six hundred seventeen dollars. So that is one one almost one point nine million dollars more than um, our proposal. And, and part of it is because we're doing one percent, and and your side has two point six seven percent. Yeah, that's the main difference because of the difference in the money. So we're proposing putting um, over a five year contract, putting a little bit more than a million dollars into the pension additional in addition to what we're already putting in there. And, and I know we were speaking. And on, currently, yeah. how much are we putting in there right now? Currently, it's in the cumulative as well. It's in the uh, cumulative register. Almost close to ten million already. Currently, so city's already putting almost ten million dollars in there. Yeah. Exactly how much I'm sorry, Oscar, I didn't mean to interrupt you. So I think in the first proposal, it was contingent on the firefighters doing that 1%. And I know we had discussion on this. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I know we have to write out the, or I guess finalize our, our counter for this, but I think we're on, on the same boat of a plan being chosen would be a contingency. It, was that something the city is willing to agree to? Oh, as like one of the plans? Yes, oh. as far as a plan being voted on instead of the 1%, because as we discussed, if it would have to be the other plan, it, it, it had other some factors possible, on it. You know, uh, for some possible reason, we vote for current or current plan that be, is voted for, and there's a 1%, but well, there's no solution and just the firefighters the and the city putting 1% because the problem will still be there. So I think we wanted to put a contingency on the uh, voting plan. Absolutely. But the goal was 30%, right? Huh? Excuse me. Twenty-five years. Twenty-five years. Oh, yeah, which is plan, plan plan one. What well, e either plan would bring us below the the state mandated mandated thirty years. All right. Correct. Right. Yes. No. So I, yeah. Yeah. And so I think what we're just trying to accomplish in our wording of the article to, to try to make sure that I guess we're on the same boat is that we want a plan to be voted on. Yes. Correct. A right. plan that changes the current. Yes. One. A plan that changes the current. Not only. Uh, his point is 
plan A brings us down to 25 years. Plan B brings us down to 33 years, the way it's presented. We want to go with the best options for the plan, for the retirement system, which is plan A, which will get up to 25 years. And what is the requirement? And, and 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. So we'll be right, we'll be below at plan, if plan A passes without anything else, without the addition of 1% from the firefighters, without the addition of the city, plan A will get us to 25 years. The addition of 1% from either the firefighters or the city will get us down another four years. So we would go from 24, 25 to 21. That would be 2%. Well, not, uh, because in the footnotes, it talks about that. That 1% will get you to 23. On three was four years? Yes. How much was it in 25 years? Three? No, on the plan one, a uh, 1%. Like, 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 yeah, on plan one, a 1% will get you down to 23. I was looking for my ballot. From either city or fire Right. So we get us, it would reduce three years, not four. Uh, on, on plan one. It on plan two, it would reduce you four years to get you to 29. Right? Yep. No, no. The percentage is in addition cuts. to it. Right, the, right the, but whether it's benefit cuts that equal out to it, were, it, were were it, it was not either the percentage increase or the benefit. No, no, it was plan A, one plan A gets you to 25 years. But that equals about, if you, if you don't talk it out, it would be about 7%. Oh, right. So this is, I guess this is a question I have with, yes, I think what Jesus is trying to make the point about Maybe it's not the, Maybe. the actuary uh, wants the Texas state law or the Texas law requires what 30, 30, years? 30 years amortization, right? Correct. And what was the actuarial report and recommendation to uh, get well, you below 30, 30 get, years? The recommendation is to do 30. Okay. As a, as a board, the board decided let's shoot for 25. 25, plan one, it was 7% cut coming from the firefighters. Plan two, mm -hmm. it was a 4.3% cut from firefighter and at the 2.6 from the city and that equal to 25 also so if all things were done they both went to 25. on that extra amendment of adding one percent that got you to 23. so really both plans can get to 23. if the city puts in a 2.67 firefighter puts in one percent plan two gets you to 23 also and one gets you to 25 and on 7% cuts on the firefighter side, and then 1% more from the firefighter gets you to 23. If the city puts in 2.67, mm -hmm. where are we going to be at? Just the city alone? Depending without on any plan? plan? No. No. It would be contingent. With like, like, with the let's go, let's go in, to, there has to be yeah, some changes. Yeah, yeah, sure, let's sure, go with sure, example, yeah. plan A. We're yes. trying to get plan A. Okay. Plan A passes. Mm -hmm. The firefighters put in 1%. And the city oh, also one percent. Yeah, because there's it's it's in the plan. plan. But the, the plan A doesn't no, say one percent. No, no, it's, it's an amendment. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So you're saying plan A has one percent. Hypothetically, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Because our our one percent is going to kick in. What we have proposal is that one percent kicks in as well from the other side. Yes. So if plan A gets voted on, the the membership votes for an additional one percent. Where would that take the plan? On twenty one. Twenty one, and then well, the city's one percent. Not sure. No, no, no. He's saying that with both. With both. The, the no, no. Is the, not... Okay. The notes here and the, the notes are in the ballot. Yeah. Plan A is going to go from 25 years to 23 years, just with the one percent. Correct. Of the firefighter. Mm -hmm. And That's 23. And plan A. And plan A. Right. Yes. But so we, we put in addition of one percent. We have no calculation for that because. Well, it's the same thing. You're, it's you're the same thing. It's the same thing, no, it's thing if you put two percent. No, no. At no, one time today. I, I know where you're going. Yeah. What you're saying is yeah. the, the plan is more sensitive, but at sure. this time, we're, we're doing it at the same time. Sure. So instead of putting one, we would put 2%. So we're doing it today, not in the future, when it becomes the actuary years come, come, come about. No, no, no. It's, so, it's, the actuary has explained to us numerous times. I've been there. Yeah, yeah. So he even calculated, if your membership right now keeps your present plan, 1% is worth a lot. Right. We're at 57 years of amortization. If the membership votes to keep present plan, but adds that amendment of 1%, they go from 57 to 45. And that's why I say you can't calculate. He's already calculated at 25 with 1% more. It's only worth two years. Where it was worth <coughs> 12 years, when we're in year at 57. That's why I said we can't hear say, oh, 23 will give us a 21. There's no guarantee. It might be only worth one and a half. It might be worth the two. It might be worth a quarter of a year. 
we're not the actuaries to be able to say that that they're at 21. What, what the actuary was saying there, uh, Mr. Chapa, is that when a plan is at, for example, 57 years, mm -hmm. and a plan is at 20 years, the sensitivity is different because sure. of the number of mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. But our plan right now is in year 57. Yes. So our sensitivity is at year 57. So if I put 1% or 2% or 3%, it's the same sensitivity. So what I'm saying right now, and that's why I'm asking the question, if 1% is bringing us two years, then 2% will bring us four years. So if plan one passes, memberships put in 1%, the firefighters, city puts in 1%, we'll be around 21 years. But that, that's, not an a, estimate. that's not a correct statement because the sensitivity, you're correct, is 57. But 1% gives you 12 down to 45. So the, but we're not, we're not considering the changes that the firefighters might make on plan one or plan two. Once you incorporate those plans, the sensitivity changes and it gets down to either 33 or, or 25, yeah. that sensitivity changes. So when we get to 33 and the firefighter puts in 1%, it goes down to 29 as opposed to 1% on 57, which made a 12 year difference. Right. When you get to 33, it only makes a four year difference. What I'm trying to say is once you get to 23, a sensitivity is not based on doubling or anything. It's sensitivity is changing at every level. You can't say, I did all this, but we're, all just, at once. we're just looking at one level right now, 57. No, and and, and I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. What I'm saying is we already know that will be at 23. It'll go down. So we're, we're already below our, 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 our goal. And that's what, so what, 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 why do you need 2.67? It's hard to say. If you put in 2.67, where is it going to take you? But and I'm asking a question. Me, this time I'm not saying. The totally city's asking, asking the, the right. firefighters to vote in plan a one, mm -hmm. 1%, and then the city will give 1%. Well, that was what we proposed in our last proposal. Okay, but that's what I'm, no, I'm just that. contingent, well, plan, contingent on 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 one plan one one percent and the city. Well, we didn't we didn't say which plan. We just say we one percent. One percent. Okay. It was the, what the your side proposed, which I think it's an excellent proposal. Let's let's try to get the most for our buck mm -hmm. and let's go for plan A because well, if we do plan two, we, we didn't specify we a plan. There. We specified one of those plans plan. being voted on. Not, so plan, not the current plan. We, gotcha. we are not here to tie our membership's hands gotcha. as far as gotcha. what, what plan to choose. So like that is up plan. to the membership gotcha. themselves. So, and so, and, and if, if I may, plan, so plan two plus the 2.67 gets you to 23 years, Chapa? Sorry? Uh, 2.67 plus plan two gets you to 25 years. No, 267 is not even in the equation. Yes, yes, it is. Plan two, two, six, seven. Plan two, plan one. No, no, no. We're talking about because it's on the ballot. Plan two plus two point six seven gives us the twenty five years. Plan one. This is what plan two is based off. Plan two is based off of getting you two point six seven. It's basically seven percent. We do it through benefit cuts. City puts two point six seven. We get to twenty five years. I got you. What we're saying is 2.67, either plan one or two, because if the members should go to plan one, the idea is not to change things or improve benefits, the idea is to bring down that expected rate of return where it should be. And so that further secures the pension to where it should be. If the membership went for plan two plus 2.67, you still have 25 years. If the membership goes for plan one plus 2.67, we drop under 25 years, and then the board turns around and lowers expected rate of return. If the membership decides plan one plus one percent and the city puts 2.67 then the board turns around and really we're talking about fixing certain things puts that expected rate of return where it should be so that the plan can sustain in a healthy uh, <coughs> basic growing pattern that's that's what we're looking at we, we understand that we're going to make cuts but we don't know where the membership is going to go some we're hearing firefighters say plan one where some say plan two but either way what we're saying is tie it to a plan so that way whatever they choose we know that worst case scenario will still be at 25 years we'll still get to where we need to be so if the membership went to plan two we're cutting about what is it about four percent four point four four point three percent the city's putting 2.67 we didn't we didn't ask the city to put half firemen are, are plan two is cuts of about 60 something percent of what, what needs to be done it's, we're asking the city for 2.67 if plan one goes in, it's even a bigger percentage. The city's percentage drops to about 25% of what cuts need to be made or additions. But the big one is removing of the overtime. And then at the end of the day, if the membership decides to put 1%, we 
which some firefighters are discussing. Then with that excess, then you drop the expected rate of return, which lifts the years again, but we still, we're still in a healthy <coughs> position. But not only that, it's a more sustainable fund. And so my next question is, what guarantee do we have that you all won't change benefit again? Benefit the, the, again? Con the conditional yes. language, yeah. the conditional language that we agree to and are asking that we still include it. Because we know what needs to what, get what done. Conditional language Man, there's, as far as the, the membership needs to vote up either plan one or two in for the city to trigger. No, David, but, but she's no, no, talking that's... about benefit increase. Right. And I think in 2014 or maybe in 2010, you all. Oh, we lowered it. Yeah. The, 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 the language there's no addition. that any in additional money we can, we can will not be considered in. for benefit increases right. anymore. We can include that. We've the benefit before. increases will be based on 14% of the, of the right. membership's uh, contribution. We've done this before. So it removes at 1%. But you can, it's always going to change. It's like, it's. That language is only as good as the next vote. No, it's in the booklet, one percent. As the next vote, right? I, you oh, vote, yeah. you change it again. But if they did that, again. though, it I mean, would, I think, would throw the I think it's in the book. It's yeah. in the booklet. It's, yes, in, yes. it's in the booklet. Yeah. It's in the booklet. We, we tied it to the book. Remember, we did this. I have to say names or anything, but we did this because this was the to circumvent what was happening at the time. So we're even proposing that the conditional language remain the same because mm -hmm. we don't want it to change. Because if it did, it would throw everything out of whack. I'm going to ask him. But at the end of the day, we can still tie it. And what we're trying to do is get there and work on the expected rate of return, cut the benefits we need to cut on our side, and then have the city contribute its share. That's, that's the idea. And we didn't go as far as asking for even half of it. We said 2.67 is what was calculated out of plan two. Plan one's even better. And the 1% even helps even further. We know what we need to do on our end. Mm -hmm. We're just asking support from the city. So we're at, and, and I think with our initial, and I know we're just having a discussion right now, and you have a counter proposal to us that we're kind of discussing, but that was our intent was we showed our intent and our commitment to help, but we want also want to make sure that the, the membership is also committed to making the changes that need to happen. Right. So, yeah. um, I mean, we did, we put we put money on it on yeah. yeah, we put a little bit over a million dollars just on that one particular yeah. item. But see, so. This is why we when, when the, the, the proposal in the city was one percent. If we put one percent, we could have just left it at that. But we came back and said, no, wait. No, and that, we understand and we help. appreciate we, we that. Need, we need more than that. Right. And the proposal is coming that the more it comes from our end, we just were asking it would be huge cuts if we just did it all once on the on the fireman's back. So that's as far as benefit cuts and and. and and the insertion of money. So we know what we need to cut on our end. We're asking the city for that contribution. We're asking, we brought it forward so that if TA'd or whatever we TA'd or agreed to, because there's going to be a pension vote and that's going to determine where a lot of this is going to go. So a TA on conditional language pretty much guarantees that one of the plans will be voted on. That's why we were asking okay. to bring it forward. Uh, we do have some information that we need um on this particular issue number one i don't have a copy of the booklet i don't know if that's something that i could get a copy of it's on the website of fire.com it's on the fire on the yeah the pension or pension it's on the pension yeah, website yeah, okay i just want to make sure i'm right looking at the right one and then we need you know when we're looking at the ballot and we're looking at the cuts that are being proposed we need a little bit of context to it and we're not looking for personal details we're just looking for averages or like how it, it is by rank but um uh, we need information, for instance, for the last three years on positions by rank, no names or anything, um, and the benefits that that the people that have retired in the last three years are getting, so that we can put into context what that's that actually looks like, and what the proposal um, that are be, proposals being so voted like on their, would look like. Their payouts or their yeah, right, their, their, pay their payouts, mm -hmm. their payouts. That's going to reduce dramatically once these both right months. and that's why we need to that would help us see what numerically okay. and objectively what what, what that really be. means so. right don't you have access to that so who would have access to mr Allison. awesome yeah, last three years, including whatever happened. Last three years, uh, retiree list, right? Mm -hmm. last three years, More like retiree list. Yeah, with ranks of, of, 
with positions or ranks if possible. And would you try to you're trying to see uh, how this the cost saving affect them? We would see what the what Just what would translate right. Yeah. yeah, we would we would be able to see objectively what the the proposals that are being voted on what those percentage cuts would 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 do to that would mean right so that the only issue right. with that is right now the current plan allows overtime so and, and we understand some individuals that. well it's just you well, can have the same rank you'll and this individual to, could be in this right. dig or you're off to retirees just based on your service because now it's only going to include their their base pay their base pay plus any incentive that they may have that that becomes their, their wage so if they have the wage and they're using so if they have uh, their base pay but they're not a medic so they have uh, r for hazmat pay or rescue pay then that incentive is included on that base pay and then based on the years of service you multiply that and that's how you get your okay. percentage we still like to see those sure, sure, the, yeah yeah, yeah. The i mean you'll, you'll see the, the path but then you'll be able to compare that rank Right, and that that'll be to a, see what a big saving that'll is be. that'll help us understand contextually <clears throat> yeah. in in all of this context what that means, what the change is going to look like. Sure. Okay. Can we work on that? Because we wouldn't be able to move in anywhere else <laughs> without a without this initial meeting. Right. Right. Want to work on that? Or? For 30 minutes and now we're going to get it done without it. You know. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, I, we, we're not ready to t. We have to. We're not ready to ta that article today. Oh, I understand. Yeah. But, but right by next week. So, so next meeting, right. So we, we have our next meeting is on the twenty second, and we want to be able to talk about it then. Well, think well about I guess whatever information we can get, and then, then there's more questions. I. What, sure. I, what I'm saying is we work solely on this if the city wants so that we can try to see it by the end of the well, I think we, we have a lot of things to work on and I don't I don't I'm not opposed to open community you know communication between the negotiator the lead negotiators um in the meantime at all like if we can get that information I'd like it you know if we can well, get when, it when's our pension hold? 27 28 29 so there's no TA you're next, talking about the vote we're, we're pushing the vote, yeah, the vote. Me, oh, the vote. 20, 27, 20, 29 of September. Because I, I, I so this is kind of a, this seems like to be a so, conundrum because the city's looking for a commitment and would want to, you know, wants to make sure that the membership's going to be committed to making changes, yet the membership wants to see what the city's uh, committed to before they make. So, you know, th there's no easy answer to that. Which is and the, I the think, reason for the conditional land. Right. Yeah. We okay. only put it in if you do something. And if okay. you don't do anything, the city can zero. Okay, well, we can work on that. Um, it's it's our turn to make a counter proposal anyway, mm -hmm. so um, we would like that information and see if we can get it, and we'll be working on a counter proposal for the next meeting. So, so just to clarify, mm -hmm. I, I know he, he wrote it down, but so you would like to see, let's say, I don't know, as an example, myself, a captain or whatever, retiring, or user service, et cetera. I I made I don't know x amount of dollars, and then do what I would make with plan one. And what I would we're looking at actually actual. So, no, actual. The last three years, three years oh, okay, of okay. actual. So, so you're not looking to see how much you're scenarios. No, no. no. The, the we just scenarios. want the actuals for the last three years. So easy. Right. Whoever retired in the last three years just gets less to know what their ranks oh, are. Okay. Okay. But what are they taking? Yeah, I guess my question is: Are you interested to see the how how drastic or how how if, much of a change from the plan to those are? We're not. There or you're just seeing just that was the first step. Well, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, guess, I'm trying to get you to the end. Information on that is the years of service matter a lot because uh, even our membership doesn't understand that. Sure, you might have gone as an assistant fire uh, assistant to the fire chief and got to that highest rank, but you want to put in 21 years of service. It's going to be that's addressed. 21, yeah. and, and I don't you're, think you're we're taking home 66 yeah. percent of that. And we're not looking necessarily to see what the formulas are. But I think what you want to look at is what, what they're getting paid. Yes. So we have a, a driver, a captain retired. What what was his benefit for much for the last three years, for however many people have retired in the last three okay. years? 
And that's so, and then the next thing will be kind of try to figure out what, 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 would, would that be the uh, next step? So yeah, we can also calculate. Step. That's what right. I'm trying to ask. I'm trying to uh, no, think absolutely. ahead so you can absolutely. see the. And I was going to say that's the next step because then we would compare it to what the change would be. And if you have a way to show us, just give us an example of that, um, that would be extremely helpful. I mean, we could do. He would do the calculation yeah. of the overtime on that person. He can go back to their payroll and remove the overtime and then just do the simple math of his yeah. base pay Here's incentives, base pay incentives and, and how that would change because that's the formula that the pension created, uh, had our IT people create well, that, that um, formula um, for future. If, if it could be a line item and then we could remove it or not remove it. Mm -hmm. I think I'd still like to see the whole thing. I mean, you're, you're going to... Yeah, they're going to give us the actual. I don't know what you mean by the whole thing. Remove, remove, what, what do you mean by like, like, No, ask, said, Oscar, was, Oscar oh. was talking about if, uh, what, if one of the plans is chosen that changes the benefit, what does that look like? Like, for instance, and one of them is well, both, of them, both of them take out overtime. Yes, right? which is one right. of the more significant yeah. both aspects of it. Just, just both, an example. Both of them remove the overtime yeah. from 20 to 40% so, of the pay. Yeah, both of them remove the overtime. They think the big ticket item there is overtime. And both of them do it. So, uh, Hassel has the system yeah. already, That's what I was but thinking. he hasn't turned it on because then that would mess up the people. But he has tested it on people, and you know, punched in their thing and said, "Oh, this is your take home pay without uh, incentives." I see. But this is now because that's going to get turned on January first. On either of these plans passing, and, that system gets and, turned and probably on. what we can do is once we have the preliminary report, then like we can probably work with Jaime and say, okay, just give me one example of the, the latest two, and what, just do one or two instead of trying to do it. Sure, so sure. You're, so just doing maybe the retirees from this year that are retiring from training mm -hmm. I think would be easier yeah. to, to realize the savings, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how the ballots, the, the yeah. election is going to turn out. Yeah. I mean. And I, don't I mean, know. we're, we're not thinking they're going to pass either plan one or two. They might say, no, we we'll stay with the current. Uh, we're not trying to dictate, one. I guess, the membership to or, or tie the membership's hand to a specific, a specific right. plan. What we're trying to do is just this be, is, be what, this is the real, most realistic situation we're in and do the best with what you, you know, with the information we provide and then make their own decision at the end of the day. I think it's easier to pass a plan knowing that what we're going to have, you know, the city, you know, help us out with, you know, at the end of the day, it's a partnership. We're both responsible for this, you know, pension. I think, you know, our members can make a better informed decision when it comes to deciding whether plan one or plan two, when it comes to, hey, you know what, well, why should I vote up any plan? And, you know, I'm going to have to do most of it on and, my and, own. And I can right? take, if, if I may, Roxy, I can tell you personally that within my tenure that I've been here, the city has been taking an active role in help, helping the, the fire the fire pension. We've increased about seven percent in the last contracts going back to two thousand one. We've increased about seven percent on the prior the after eighty eight employees and in the prior employees prior, prior eighty eight we did about another one point four five. So in total total, the city from two thousand one to current we put in about eight point five three percent more during this contract. So the city is aware of it. We have been we have been doing a role or participating on it. And we put in 8.53 in, in this time, uh, additional monies. So we are we are aware of what you're saying and we have we have been active in this. So it's not like the city no, has not and, and no, 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 sure, no, but at, at the same, that, the same yeah. token, since I've been a farm and we've been putting in an extra six, seven percent. Uh, I, in, in, I we've taken an active role of cutting benefits, going against some of the you you and Ricardo have been there, going against some of the popular opinions in our department, trying to get this under control. I think this is as close as we've ever been to being able to drastically cut these benefits to where they need to be. Uh, and, 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 I mean, we understand the city. We're we're, we're, at, we're we're actively let me say lobbying our members on we need to be responsible. It's, it's been a but, work. It's but, been a working but, process. Mr. Alani said. It's correct. It's hard to continue to push our membership to say we need to be responsible and do this if the city's going to get we're not going to put anything in because it's well, very the, the easy. Money. They can say 
Well, let's either we'll just go to the state and then have and that, that has been my point, right? David. We we and need that's to, what we're the, trying the to memberships might not be aware that we have been putting the city has no they're aware we we, we, we so, make sure they're aware. so we've given the city credit where, where, where the, city, yeah. the, the city has been there so we understand yeah. that and but we also want to put which, on the which, table and demonstrate yeah. that right in the 24 25 year career I, I personally i've been doing my part of trying to get this under control uh there's a bunch of people here that have been doing this for over 20 years how much has the from 2001 moving forward how much has been the contribution from from the fire service? Going back to uh, like I know when I came in, I know we were you've at about been 9%, in fourteen percent for a long we're time. 15, no, no when we're I came in, we were at about ten because there was a point here that we voted in two percent. I remember fifteen for a long, long time. One. Right? No, so fifteen. They increased. Yeah, we're at fifteen. We're at fifteen. Fifteen. They increased it six years. So I understand this is put in six years ago. Right? No, I've been there where twenty. And our pay was. I want to say it was eighteen thousand. We still do it. That was fourteen. Increased it to put in. Yes. Before I came in, what was the question? From two thousand one. How much has the contribution been for firefighters? At least five percent increase. Uh, so five years. I joined in '98. You're you're no, five or six. 2000, I'm going in 2000, 2001. Right. No, I, uh, I, I'm saying I joined in. So 98. right now we're at 15. Right. What were we in 2001? Right around 10. I'm not sure. I was 10. Yeah. I was in first grade. It was one year we increased. In what year? What year? No one It was one year increased two percent because. Remember, what was it, Chapa? The, the senior officers were like, vote, vote plan C, say yes. bye to me, and right there, we're going to leave. I think that was before that. That was 2000. Yeah. Because oh, I, yeah, since really I remember 20 years ago when I started in Peru, I think it was 14 when I came in. In 2001? 2001, 2002, I think, and then it went to 15. But let me double check. I, I can see that in the system. I forgot. I like to say. And on top of that, we've, we've cut benefits. We, we've tied. It cut benefits and give increased benefits, both sides. Since I've been here, we could. Well, I didn't, because it was split. <laughs> Not plan. We could. Since I've been here, we could. Not since I've been on the board with the individual side. No, you're right. You're wrong. I agree with you. Nah, I'm going to get like, I like, to, like David said, I'll give you credit. We haven't, I since you've been in there, we, we have we, not increased we benefits. On the <laughs> we, fought, we fought some battles with you against our own personnel, but OK. <laughs> I mean, I, I do, I, I can say, and I can pause that no, the last from our side? four years, no, I've worked, no, I've been moving in the right direction. Every, everything, the all the changes have affected me drastically, but I always say it's really great. No, it's just, yeah, the, 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 I want a pension to be there when I pass my career. Not for me, because I'm getting cut drastically. Whether it's responsible, it's responsible. Okay, let's see. So we'll, uh, on Article 30, we have your counter proposal. That was one from 9-9. We're just talking about it more. Yes. And it's our turn to, uh, we'll be presenting the counter proposal uh, on the 22nd. Okay. You want to go on to the one we worked on, right? Yeah. Yeah, for us. Okay. Yeah, maybe Okay, let me just caucus real quick. Uh, we have to print out two. Yep. I think it's two articles. Yeah. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to get a copy of the tentative agreement for Article 6. Yeah, Article 6 and then the, the seal. Yeah, I have to make a, another copy. He might, he might have another copy. Sure, and I then I have to do, yeah. a, I have to yeah. print out Article 10 anyway. Okay. So let's caucus, we'll do that, and then we'll, we'll sign yeah, off. I did find my... Okay, I'll, I can print one out so you can have yours. All right. Okay. Yes. You're all going to caucus? Yes. yes. Okay. How long? How much? How long? Uh, yes, sir.
Okay, we have um, six, we have, um, we took the tentative agreement um, and we looked at some clarifying language. <clears throat> And the issue, we determined that the issue is not so much the actual approval of the initial uh, exchanges because that's already addressed. Uh, the fire station's district chief captain and acting captain already have notification of the exchange because they have to approve it, correct? So the, the issue became that um, when the shift exchanges were approved, uh, the payback date must be stated on that work exchange form but there was it is allowable that it can be changed as needed and agreed upon by the employees so those changes were what needed to be um what the supervisor or the station captains uh, needed notification of so we, we've just uh, clarified the language to state if there are any changes to the initial date of payback the firefighters must notify the station's district chief captain or acting captain and i think that solves the problem yes. and we've prepared it for a tentative agreement uh, and I have um, I have two clean copies right here with the where the staple is adequate adequate because some of them are kind of funky. Yeah, so I'll sign these ones and pass them to you, Charlie. Fifteen. Five PM. <clears throat> Here's the first one.
Okay. So we have signed a tentative agreement on Article 10 duty hours. Okay. So we have two tentative agreements today. Yeah. Yep. There it is. Okay. And I believe uh, y'all have some counter proposals to, yes. to propose. <clears throat> First one being will be Article 4. The conversation we were having this morning uh, is concerning Article 4, uh, Regulation of Negotiating Authorities 4.3. Uh, the verbiage stayed the same on 4.3 that provide services for the Laredo Fire Department, including but not limited to fire <clears throat> and or emergency services. Uh, it include one associate representative who provide opinions and voice the city's designated negotiating representative issues in any advisory capacity, in an advisory capacity only during the negotiation process. We propose also uh, an addition since it was brought up uh, 4.4 and a new uh, subsection to the article the city of Laredo shall comply with Texas government code pursuant to intergovernmental relations. Okay, and what is the uh, 4.4 meant to address because the city of Laredo has to comply with um, the government code on that anyway. Just um, so under the section that was mentioned. Um, pretty much that it must be in writing. Uh, basically, the service is not going to be stated. And we discussed it. Some of the entities that we're currently, whether they're considered MOUs or just understandings, uh, multiple are not in writing. So what we're asking is that they would be in writing. So that um, one of the big parts is that uh, it requires that the liability, who has the liability, um, some sections state that there is no contract as far as law enforcement that the city says Rio Rao as an example. If uh, the law enforcement agency would be responding to Rio Rao, Rio Rao would be responsible for the civil liability. We would want that this section to be enforced so that it's in writing. And what we want is our advisor would be saying we want the city of Laredo to be liable for if we get injured okay. so that it gets sent out. So what we're finding is that 79.1 791.006A1, 771.0021, we follow. I spoke with the chief and I asked him about MOUs with all of these government entities. And he said he's going to look for them. And if there isn't one, then the legal department would help him and his staff draft up MOUs. Yeah, and that's, that's basically what we're asking. Okay. Sure. We'll evaluate that and look at it. Okay. The main, the main part of it is that the <clears> Or is uh, if I go to a fire, die, and send me off, and it's any sort of supposed to be responded, I'd rather just say the same. Okay. Here's the ball. Next one's Article 8 under duties. <clears throat> On this one, we propose to. <clears throat> strike the original 
proposed language uh, <laughs> the no, no the the proposed the counter proposal pursuant to the radio fire department manual and as the <clears throat> and as delegated to them by their superior uh, superior officers this we're proposing this to be strike and leave 8.3 the 60 shifts and 8.5 orders and directives to maintain um, this in reality is just reflecting because of the fact that this manual has been basically for a long time anytime that the sops you're referring to they're being rewritten is going to be constantly basically ever changing this article Oh, well, I think it was just whatever the SOPs were at the time. That's what was meant. And, and I think that in the SOPs, <clears throat> there is a provision in the, and I need to look at the whole thing, but I believe there's a provision in the SOPs that says that they, there's something that overrides the SOP that's been negotiated in the contract and the contract uh, prevails. So yeah. something yeah. like that. And we need to, I need to look at that a little bit closer. I think our, our biggest concern when it comes to, you know, that, that right there, it would basically nullify, you know, 8.1 or 8.2. At any point, anybody could write something into a SOP, and it would become the, I guess, the new norm that you would have to follow as far as, you know, not be including to be uh, overtime paid because you're doing another duty, but it's in the in the policy, but you're asked to do something that's out of your that you're normally not accustomed to do. Okay. An example is uh, during COVID, firefighters that were nurses were asked to come in, and they were paid time and a half due to it being outside our duties. Right, because you were or acting as nurses, right? right? Not paramedics service. or firefighters. So, but if the policy might have changed, well, you know what? We have nurses, we're going to use them. It will render 8.2 eight well, yeah. to that issue. And I so don't know that that would actually happen because nurses require a different license. And that's, you know, that's separate <laughs> and apart from a fire yeah. certification and a paramedic certification. But, right. but the intent is not for something that is clearly outside that scope where you're acting like a nurse rather than a firefighter or emergency services provider. That that was not meant to affect that. Right. So, and yeah. that's why we pretty much uh, the duties are listed in 8.1. And if there are any other duties that would like to be included, we can, okay. we can amend 8.1. And if maybe there's no issue, there's no issue. We just add it to 8.1. But the, yeah. the policy manual from chief to chief or from day to day could change. And, and right. that from that one, one day to the next, it could change the entire intent of the article. So we're just okay. Hesitant. We'll look at that and I'll, um, and I'll review the. Um, I'll look at the the history of the SOPs and look at a little yeah. bit more. And the one the that. seventeen references from fire chief and team. Right. Um, so chief heard took over during COVID. Right. Um, so now that it's winding down and has winding down along now, there may be a new policies changing. So uh, it's at a time where that those policies change. We, we wouldn't want to marry ourselves to that language and then have the SOP manual completely revamped. So okay. Say. Yeah, and and I, I believe that the, all the SOP manuals have that provision that if there's something negotiated in the contract that that is that prevails because it's part of the collective bargaining agreement. So I'll look, we'll look at that one. Okay. <clears throat> just, uh, just a question. So you're looking at more of an exhausted list in 8.1 as opposed to something. Well, 8.1 gives just general terms. Um, okay. the, the issue is with this the insertion of this language. Now this would be the new article. So whatever the SOP manual states. So it's not overriding anything in the SOP manual. So if some of those articles in the SOP would be expanded on, then it, would, it potentially could change out the, the, we don't feel it's an exhaustive list, what's in 8.1, the, the, the general terms. Is yeah, so it's pretty it general because right. it says assigned to, the fear firefighters shall, those shall only be assigned to perform duties related to firefighting, fire prevention, rescue, emergency medical service salvage overhaul work and maintenance of firefighting equipment and it keeps going on but i mean the general it says related to firefighter fire prevent firefighting fire prevention rescue and emergency medical service that that yeah. would encompass any, anything that well, comes under emergency medical services the wording in 8.1 of changing uh changing out the tires right because i'm chief so it was like no that that deals with the fire truck so that's your job so the, from there would they could expand to oil changes. It could expand to certain things that we're not certified for. That maybe we're not Can you required. look at my car before? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 not all wheel, not engines. I'm just we kidding. Have an issue. It's just in the past. No, I understand. Firefighters with, with, uh, that could work on diesel engines have brought, been brought in on overtime. So that couldn't necessarily change them being brought in on overtime while I'm ordering you to just show up, right? Because now it's one of your duties. 
what it, it's time and a half or not. Okay. Um, so just to stay away from the potential of that, it, sure. even in her tank. Okay. Next one be Article 31. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> you gonna put that in there? <laughs> All right. Under this one, uh, our counter proposals to add the language to 31.3. Employee has the option to exercise his or her wine garden and guarantee rights. Our language to stay the same as originally proposed or originally stated in the contract. Okay. On a, on adding 31.3, I mean, uh, Weingart or Garrity or Supreme Court cases, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what is the issue that this is trying to address? You, uh, as one of the counters of Water Leave Alone, you mentioned that we're allowed to call in a union rep uh, when the fire is brought in. Uh, you, you mentioned it as one of the rights that we currently have. So you know what? We'll just put in right. Okay. Pretty much it. So the Garrity right isn't... Does it have that? That's, it basically is uh, self that, some credit. Right. You I was going to say the Garrity right doesn't have anything to do with that, though, right? The, the well, Garrity right is a right against self incrimination. Well, yes. Under the Wine Garden rights, if you're brought in under investigation, um, there's options, right? I have the right to call for a union rep. I have a right to seize uh, if the right. chief that doesn't allow me to call in my union rep. I have a right to seize and it wouldn't be used against me for disciplinary action. So if those, that investigation ties in. A possibility of incriminating myself, then I have the right to call in my union rep. Right? So they, they kind of uh, support each other. And okay. Ones, we reference both of them. Uh, no time it's to circumvent anything, but we mentioned as the counter to not I include see. the language. But you know what? Uh, since we normally, it's a the common practice, it's always done since, mm -hmm. we, since I've been here. We just wanted to write it into the contract. Is it only applies to public employees? But does that include civil service employees? Well, if we write it into the contract. Yeah. So, yeah, and it, um, if there's, for instance, in, for public safety, if there's a requirement that you must cooperate and provide information, um, it can't be, it can only be used in the administrative right. investigation. It can't be used in a criminal investigation, it can't be used in any of that. And, and there's usually when an IA uh, for police or fire is open, you usually sign are notified and have to sign a Garrity right notification so that you know what the rights are that even right. though you're being forced to cooperate and provide this information it's only used for the administrative right. investigation yeah. cannot be used for the criminal and so training the wine garden then you would be allowed to call in the union rep for that issue. yeah okay all right we'll look at this <clears throat> okay i guess to, for today we're yeah, we'll be done. <clears throat> okay. That's all the proposal we have for today. Maybe. Okay. We will take these and uh, we will work on counter proposals. Um, and I believe that we have provided you all of the information that you have requested from the last meeting. If there's anything that's still pending, let me know. And you can send me an email and we'll work on getting that. Um, I have the requests on that. I'll look at the booklet. I may need help. I'll, I'll ask Jesus to make sure that I know where to look for the booklet and we can use that for the pension. Uh, but other than that, the next meeting we'll post for is on Thursday, the 22nd. Yes. And um, I think I think I've worked it out. I was worried that I may have to be a little bit late, but I think I've worked it out to where we can start, um, start at 10 is normal. On the 22nd. Yeah, on the 22nd. So I will post that. If you want to just touch on the last time. Oh, yeah. And, and, and actually, what's actually on the, the roster. Yeah, what, uh, going back and what uh, David's talking about, 
the <clears throat> form you sent us over according to new uh, additional FTEs are requested when we proposed uh, let's see, yeah. oh the our staffing the article staffing. the one titled yeah, the one, CBA yeah. roster total article 12 staffing yes you have that one Mrs. Huh? That's the form yeah. he's actually has. Right there. Yeah. What, what you have there was that a snapshot of a, a uh, baby roster, roster or the official roster? Or the official you know, roster? What it is is a listing of all the equipment and based on Article 12, what the shall strive scenario would have and what the shall maintain impact is going to be. So does that encompass the 407 FTEs? Well, this is not talking, no, this is right. not this. If this is only, for example, you need 87. Uh, FTEs per shift to maintain the minimum staffing. If you go to shall, you'll need 106 per shift. Mm -hmm. Which we currently um, have in the SCBA 407 FTEs. Right, but some of them are in administration, eight to five. So they're not right. on the line. This is just the equipment that's on, on the line, right? It, yes, but according to that form, what you're sending us, each engine company has only three staff personnel, and you're saying each additional person Our is going to, <clears throat> each, each unit is going to add one additional person coming because out to the Because at the moment that we say child, I have to have four people on each engine, or yes, on the, each engine and the ladders and the arc. But I have but, to have four. Yeah, but according to the roster, you know, the way by our calculations is not 40 personnel or 40 additional personnel. Like one or two. Actually, I, I have 57. Well, I use 47 for the calculation because I wanted to be conservative, but it's not. We just can you can you provide us a, can you provide us your calculations because so we can compare. So I guess we wanted to compare to see what you were thinking. Well, you I'm not using I'm not using the roster because mm -hmm. the roster has people in there, mm -hmm. but in actuality, some of you got a, an average of 25 people that are out. Mm -hmm. So I can't count. I can't <clears> use the <throat> roster because they're out. So. So once I take the, you know, and, and I'm, I didn't even get to that calculation. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, if I need to have three, this is what I need, 87. If I now have to have four people on those vehicles and I need. Oh, you're saying that we have to staff four on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes. Well, that's Perfect. what you're requesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, because that's your request. Now it, it's not shall strive to maintain. Now it's shall strive. It's so you're saying maintain. if we have five people, two on vacations, you're, you're counting we have to hire well, one I, more for no, it. I, no, I didn't even, even. I didn't even go to that the second part of the calculation. I went to just, okay, I, I, if I can get, if I can do three, this is, I need 87 bodies. If I have to have four people on each equipment, then I have to have 106. So you said so mandatory then, staffing of four per unit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because so, so you're, you're, you're claiming, well, not claiming, but you're figuring the, Calculate. the calculating is you're going to have 25 individuals out 365 days a year. Well, I, I, and I didn't get to the part two. That's why I reduced the, if, if I just look at this, this number, the difference there is 19 per shift, so that's 57. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then I'm kind of seeing what, I'm, what's the manpower. Now I'm looking at the bodies, and that's why I came to 40. Mm -hmm. But in reality, if I just go and change the wording, I have to have four people on those ladders, four so people on the He's engines. not even taking into right. consideration the people on leave. He's just saying, this is how many people that I will, that the city mm -hmm. will be required to have on each apparatus mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And then if it changes, that goes up. And that's why you see the negative one on when it goes up to mandatory you have four to bring some people in or not. And it requires, it, yes, it requires the, the mechanics of it is, the mechanics is, a, is part two. Mm -hmm. The first part is how many, how many, is that what's the minimum right now on those vehicles three? Mm -hmm. And if we change that wording on the contract based on the proposal, mm -hmm. now I need to have four. Well, what's my difference between my three and four? It's one more person per unit, per unit which we have 19 units times three shifts. So, because then what you're talking about is, okay, do I take those 57 people from admin and put them on the line? Or you can just, or fully, I, or I, or or I can check. fully staff admin and leave the line personnel the way as is. The what? Not, no. if you're, not if you're requesting the form. Right. Mm -hmm. We did that exercise because yeah. of if you don't wanna, this if, is based if, on if, the If you don't want to impact admin, then it's 57 UFTs. Mm -hmm. If you take them away from admin, then it's no more FTEs. You just need to ship them. But then you'll be short in, in, in the administrative side, 57, 57 employees. So the department will be short staffed? Yes. Which is the current practice right now? No. You're asking for no, mandatory no four person <laughs> well, staff. You have 400, 407 FTEs, and I'm yes. getting based on the FTEs because really we have 420. 
bodies we have because of the over hires. Yeah. Well, no, because of the over hires that we have in the in the cadets right now. So in the line, you're short staff because they're out in the academy. So, but but I'm not even there yet because I'm just looking to see how much more, how many how, how many more bodies well, going to be the impact. Be impacted. Yeah. What's going to be the impact when if it would be a requirement? Right. Because right now on the roster you have four men crews in the roster. Not on everywhere. Not everywhere. Right. Yeah. Not everywhere. But, but no, they're assigned. Yeah. But, but when you then, assigned, but which is not required part two of the exercise would be okay. Now, how many do I have? How many out on leave? How many do I need to hire to make sure I have the minimum? Okay. And that was the logic in response to the forty. So in, in actuality, it was 57 is a number, but I was using 40 to be conservative because- But those, those again, are new hires. Yes. The 40 that I have there was new hires. That's why the amount is so high in the proposal. Because if not, you go back to the same thing. Where are you going to get those extra people? Where are you going to get that extra body to put on the truck? It's either an employee or overtime. Or bring it in from administration. Or bring it in from administration. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. I get you. Because right now I think we're down. Normally we have about ninety in admin. And right now we're down to like fifty. So plus or minus ninety plus or minus. Mm -hmm. Does I remember data and the fees? Anything else, sir? Okay. I'm just wondering what the breakdown is. Well, we end on a positive note with two TAs, and I think we're close on a bunch. <laughs> and we've had some very good conversations today. I know, and, and I agree. We we have some difficult issues to tackle and difficult conversations, but you know, I think we're the people to do it, and yeah. and we'll come to an agreement. So, okay, yeah. So uh, we will see you uh, next Thursday. Yes. And uh, we will be working on our end, and um, we look forward to seeing you here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Hostage, you're sitting with that breakdown for the last three years. Do you have my uh, email? Or do you have Jesus's? You can forward it to Oscar, and he can forward it to me. Yeah. Are we uh, ready to go off the record? We're ready to adjourn. Okay. Yeah, we're adjourned. Thank you all. Oops. <laughs>